Welcome back to another episode of the Empty Netters podcast. CP and I are back from Spain. From España. Y with Delicias. The Sangria with Delicias. And we've got an unbelievable episode for you. Pierre-Luc Dubois, newest member of the LA Kings, joins the podcast. And what a guy. What a dude. Oh, man. What a guy. PL is an absolute homie. Gotta love it. Um, how was Spain for you? Spain was wonderful. Uh, the weather wasn't great at the beginning. Not that I'm complaining. But it was tremendous after that. Yes. And uh, I ate a lot of meats. A lot of meats, a lot of seafood. Yeah. I love eating. Love going out to eat. Yeah. I am. I'm kind of, I'm, I'm exhausted. We went to a lot of restaurants. Oh my God. I need dude. to cook at home for a little while. Yeah. I need to sleep. Yes. I need to cook. You, I, you feeling jet lagged yet? No, but it, tonight's going to be tough. I got a roller game tonight and I'm. I stayed up on all my flights. Dash five tonight. Probably. Intentionally, because I was like, I'm going to get home at nine. I'm going to go to bed. I'm going to sleep tonight. Uh, I woke up at like five, like a gunshot. Yeah. Was just up. And I was like, fuck me. So I'm in trouble. Yep. Um, not great. Not great. I'm getting on a plane tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Vegas, baby. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Uh, okay. Well, we are going to start this episode the way we start every episode. And that is with hot ice. And hot ice is brought to you by Howie's Hockey Tape. That is Howie's Hot Ice for you, folks. Howie's Hot Ice, because I got my sick Howie's lit on. It's the best Brian's got his sick Howie's shirt. Such a fire shirt. That is a the fire 70s shirt. vibe. I love this shirt. I keep it in the office. It's, uh, <laughs> it's like a go-to if I never need like a, I don't know, a new shirt. Yeah. There you go. You'd be, you'd be the best it's dressed so guy in the dope, office. dude. God, I love that. I love Hot Ice just as much as I love Howie's, and that's a whole hell of a lot. Yeah. Best hockey tape in the game. First thing I want to bring up, Dan is our boy, Chris Chelios. <sighs> Love to see it. Getting the number put up in the rafters in Chicago, Thought and he time. found out in style. Yes, he did. <laughs> did you see this, Bri? No, I did not. Chris Chelios at a Pearl Jam concert gets brought up on stage, and the band gets to tell him that the Blackhawks are retiring his number. Is he a big Pearl Jam guy, I'm guessing? He's huge. He's really good huge. friends with Eddie. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Um, I had a couple reactions. One, I thought, all of that was so sick. I mean, Chris has a couple cool comments, like just he's such good friends with the band and getting up there and like get, having that experience with them. You know, like that's that's yeah. an awesome moment. Um, my second reaction was exactly what you just said. Do you remember what you said? About time. Yeah. I went like this, about time. And then I was like, is it? Yeah. All time player, obviously. Was he... Like and uh, his his hockey years was like eight years or whatever. Like he's he's has more accolades on other teams. I guess is all I'm saying. I suppose, but no, hundred percent. It's about time. He is he is a he's a historic Blackhawk. He's he's a Chicago guy. He's a huge part of that city still. I Those mean, were his best skill years. And, like his and, best his best. Um, and, and more than that, like he he is a part of Chicago. Oh, absolutely. You know, like it, it, he whenever That's you see Chelly, he's wearing a Blackhawk mm -hmm. jersey. No one. No one is buying, I mean, they literally are, but you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. No one's being like, yeah, you know, Red Wings, Chelly, Montreal, Chelly. It's like, he is a Blackhawk. No doubt about it. Fourth in Blackhawks history among defensemen in assists and points. Fifth in goals and games. I mean, that's a retired guy. He's about One of the time. greatest defensemen of all time. Captain from 95 to 99. No doubt about it. No um, doubt about it. It's pretty sick. You uh, love to see it. I, um... He had the uh, the um, the Rocky jersey on when it happened in t with twenty three on it, and then they do the video and he's like getting seven retired and I was like oh I I, I was waiting for like the the like Ray, reverse yeah. Ray Bork like he pulls off a seven yeah. you know but like I, I think he genuinely didn't know and was surprised yeah which is extra yeah. cool for him um that'll be a great night that'll oh, be a great night, night. he'll be, I uh, be there the El Bandido Yankee will be, gonna be will be flowing that night we should go on his boat after and that would actually be really fun we should try to go to that game did they say when it was. I think it's in 2024. I think it's February. Um, February 25th. Oh, yeah. I meant to tell you this. They're playing the wings, which was intentional. Yeah. <laughs> like, I have to believe. It's, it's, it's an ownership. Move. I have to They're believe. Like, he's our guy. They were like, fuck you. He's our guy. Oh, <laughs> uh, that killed me. Uh, let's go to that game. Let's go to that game. Sure? It'd be try too cold to be on the, be on the boat, but yeah, let's go to that definitely. game. <laughs> um, okay, second thing. Quinn Hughes. Oh, captain, my captain. Captain, that's Captain Quinn to you, Brian. How do you feel? 
I love it. I think it's a no brainer. I have long said, I think Quinn Hughes is one of the most underrated guys in the league. He is a top five, six defenseman in the national. He has been electric for that team since he joined. He signed long term. He is their guy. He is committed to the project. I I think really when it comes down to it, it was Besser, Quinn, JT, or Petey, I think. And JT's a little bit older. I feel like JT's name is on the trade docket every single fucking trade deadline. So I'm not really sure you can make that guy a captain, especially after you just traded your captain. Uh, Besser's injury stuff is a little uh, wishy-washy. And then Petey is, you know, he's not not signed long term yet. So yeah, I think it's just a good move. You know, I love me a defenseman captain um, as much as Marchand deserves it and has earned it and is already a leader in that locker room. I'm a big McAvoy guy. Yep. I'm like, I love a defenseman captain. I think it's so classy, something about it. And I think Quinn's perfect. I will I will say this, Quinn. I'm talking right to you. You got to get a little more talkative, I think. Quinn's pretty down the middle. Yeah. Kind of not shy, but you know, but maybe uh, th- that might be a good thing. Maybe he saves it all for the locker room. Um 15th captain and third defenseman captain in Canucks history. Yeah. That's cool. Very cool. My concern is I would need if I was in the NHL, I would need my captain to know about exploding golf balls. That's a fair argument. I'm just not sure I can live in a world where the guy telling me what to do is a 23 year old who's never who thought he exploded a golf ball. But literally. here's the thing, man. <laughs> Quinner Quinner's not on YouTube. He's not watching yeah. Instagram because he's because he's dialed. He's locked in. That's actually exactly who I need my captain. That's why you're a 70 plus point guy from the blue line. Uh, that leaves nine teams without a captain. Yeah. The Ducks, the Yotes, the Bees, the Flames, the Blackhawks, the Flyers, the Kraken, the Blues, and the Jets. Yeah, you got to think some of those will all be answered coming up here soon. I think that's right. I'll I'll tell you this. If the Bees head into this season without naming Marshy, without naming a captain, I think that means things. Interesting take. Don't hate it. I think it means things. Don't hate it. Um, Anaheim. You got to make it Terry, I think. 100%, dude. What? Yeah, 100%. No, dude. You think Trev? I don't. The, neither of them are the captain yet. Oh, Troy is a, Troy is a leader. No doubt no, about it. That, no chance. Uh, Yotes. Clayton. I don't hate that. Bees. Flames. Flames. I, um, I kind of <laughs> like. give it to Lindholm and you go like this. Yeah, Please. that that it, well, if he stays, I would honestly give it to him. I I like Hubie. I I think Hubido would be a great yep. captain there. Um, Hawks, no captain. Hawks, no captain this year. Flyers. Um, that's interesting. Konechny would be yeah. my vote. Kraken. I kind of like what they're doing right now. I like. I, might, I, 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 I honestly, like, I don't want to mess with Mojo. Funky, dude. Don't, stay funky. Yeah. Blues. People forget Bobby Orr was never a captain yeah, on, the, correct. on the Bruins. Just do that, Kraken. Just never yeah. have a captain. Blues, um, Thomas. Thomas, I'd say. Or um, actually, Falk. Falk is, mm. feels like a captain to me. Jets. <laughs> I mean, it's Shifley. Shifley. Shifley's probably gone. But that, you do the same thing. You, you make you make Hellebuck and Shifley co-captains. Yeah. Not assistants. To a double C. And, the and then, like, then you know you Fair stay. One. You stay, please. Um, happy for Quinn. Yeah. Happy. For oh, wait, are we not going to get this? That was, fun. that's nine. Oh, that was it. That yeah. was the nine. Yeah. Okay. Very happy for Quinn. Very deserved. Um, really nice notch on Quinner's belt too, to be the first to use to be a captain. Oh, cool. So, yep. Suck it, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> he's coming. Actually, he may be not like he's got a wait. He's got a ways to, I, wait. yeah. I mean, there's yeah. a world where he, I mean, you know, he's a leader. Yeah, yeah, of course. Room, of course. There is a world that him and Nico just ride That's what I'm the next 12 fucking years. Ways and, to go. Yeah. Um, okay. We're taking a quick break from the podcast to talk about our amazing sponsor, Howie's Hockey Tape. Whether you are an NHL player or playing down in mini mites, Howie's is supplying every player across the globe with the best hockey apparel and accessories you could ever imagine. If you want tape, if you want wax, if you want cloth tape, 
If you want great gear like t-shirts, hats, like the one CP is wearing right now, Howie's is absolutely the way to go. We all need to stock up our bags with tape, laces, wax. I've got it all the time. You're always running out. Someone's asking for clear tape in the locker room, things like that. Howie's is the only option because it is the best option. So go to Howie's, stock up. Hockey season is right around the corner. We're playing all summer. We're getting ready for the season. Pump in that promo code EMPTY, E-M-P-T-Y, and you're going to save a great, great percentage on whatever your order is. And like we said, I recommend scooping up some of this apparel. Comfiest t-shirts in the game. They fit like a glove. And when it comes to tape, there is no other comparison. Howie's is the absolute best. They take care of any type of hockey you're playing. So jump on board, get in board, and on board with Howie's Hockey Tape. Let's get to PL. Yeah. Great that interview. Was, uh, that was Howie's Hot Ice, and we're not going to uh, make you guys wait any longer. We're going to get right into this PL interview. He's the man. We hope you enjoy it. In so. Barcelona, I thought I thought I was going to get mugged. I right. got oh, in, uh, I got in um, like the bike cabs. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And by myself. And the guy's like pedaling on the boardwalk because we're staying like at the end of the boardwalk, and we're at the bars like on the – so you, there's a straight line to the hotel. And then he's going down. Then he's like, oh, I can't uh, pedal here at night, so I got to go through the streets. And I was like, oh. oh and then he goes through the streets and goes through, like, alleys. And I see these two guys, like, smoking yeah. at the end. I'm like. This is coordinated. This, I, yeah. yeah. I yeah, have yeah, my yeah. wallet ready just, like, to throw and leave. Yeah. yeah. And he goes by. Then he stops, like, a stop sign for, like, two minutes. And I told him, I was like, yeah, yeah, you, you want me to get on the bike? And he's like, no. I was like, please let me get on the bike. So you went in the back. I pedaled to no straight way, to the hotel. Dude. I like sprinted, like not sitting down, just like straight up to the dude, hotel. You drove the cab well, driver. No, I the drove the cab driver. There's I was two like, things. <laughs> that is such a good fucking story. I'm so mad that that we're not recording. Oh, right now. God damn! I might I, make. I did record that. Oh, good. All right, great. That, that is, is such so a good, good fucking story. Um, and then we got there, and he told me because before we went, he said, "I said how much?" He said twenty bucks. I was like, "Okay, I just want to get back." Yeah. yeah. We got to the hotel, and he's like fifty. I was like, dude, I pedaled yeah, yeah, yeah. three quarters you of the way here. You paid me 50. You, yeah. <laughs> and he, he kept like, he was like holding my arm and the security from the hotel came out and we're like, yeah, did you give him his 20 bucks? I was like, yeah. And they're like, okay, get out. And yeah. the guy left. Good. I was like, I pedaled here. Yeah. Dude, yeah. And you're asking <laughs> me for more money? That is insane. All right. We're officially welcoming Gretzky Cup gold medalist, world junior silver medalist, the Paul Dumont trophy winner, the Mike Bossy trophy winner, 2022 world championship all-star. And the third overall pick of the 2016 NHL draft, Pierre Luc Dubois. Welcome to the Empty Nerves podcast. Thanks for having me. It's just a long time coming. Dude. It this is. is exciting, exciting yep. stuff. I'm very, very happy about dude, it, dude. What? Um, well, when we met, uh, when you first got here for Media Day or, or you know the Kings yeah. Media and everything, um, I heard one of the reporters ask, was like, "What? What should I? We call you?" And you're like, "PL's good." So I call you PL. But I'm curious, like, dude, what is? I want the scope of what people call you. Like, what do your boys at home call you? What do the guys in the locker room call you? What does your mother call you? Like, because we have a funny sphere of people who know you, and everyone refers to you as something. Yeah, like yeah, I have a lot of names. Yeah, you do. <laughs> I don't even know where to start. Um, I got Doobie. Yeah, yep. which is sick. That is a sick nickname. That was my dad's nickname oh, when he cool. played. Because my dad played yep. Um, yep. in the AHL and IHL, so that was his nickname. So kind of started because of that, and then I have Doobs. Because I don't know why. Honestly, I don't remember that one. Duber is my Instagram. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That doesn't really apply. Nobody really calls me Duber. I have PL, which is like what my family and close friends call me. But then I got to Columbus and Torts said PL was too complicated and too long. So you changed <laughs> it to Luke. So I also have Luke. Yeah. That's what I said. I was like, complicated, long? PL. Two letters. Torts, dude. He's like, no, like, no, it's too much. It's, it's Luke. I was like, all right. Yeah, so yeah. he would call me Luke. Nobody else calls me Luke. Um, Doobie, Doos, Duber, Luke. PL. And then uh, here, like my, when I was younger, you ever watch Even Stevens? Fuck oh yeah. my God. Yeah, okay. So yeah. my cousins who are older than me and my sister, when I was annoying, they call me Beans. No, no, dude. <laughs> and that I love, brutal. I love Beans. Yeah. I think it's hilarious. So a few, that's like, that's come up in the past, but yeah. So I'd say those five or whatever. Okay. Pierre Luke, when I was in trouble. When you're in trouble. My, okay. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's I never want to hear trouble. that one. Yeah. yeah, yeah you by hear anybody. Luke and you're like, oh, oh shit, yeah. Dude. What did they find? I'm in trouble. That's great. Um, what do the boys on the Kings call you so far? Uh, Doobie. Doobie. Then we have Doobie, Dewey, Louie. Yeah, it's a lot, dude. <laughs> so, yeah, that's that's a lot. That's We got to fix that. Doobie dude. and Dewey crazy. is too yeah, close. For that's me. way too close. Well, last year they had Corpy and Kopi. 
Yeah. That's even worse. Yeah. That is worse, actually. That's a yeah. good point. We'll have to that, have... That's why he got sent out. That's why yeah. I was like, you're, <laughs> you're not getting Yeah, you better start going by PL. Yeah, yeah. I got to change it up, yeah. Shit, that's That's amazing, dude. How's it like? been in LA this summer you having a good time yeah yeah it's been great um you know the July being here in July is really fun yeah so for like a week I felt like I did everything I could do yeah um and then I got back here August 7th um you know almost like a month already I yeah, don't even know what day it is flies. anymore yeah but uh yeah it's been great me meeting the guys going in the gym yeah, um yeah. skating with everybody uh you know South Bay is so sick down there too. Yeah, yeah. We, <laughs> you know, went to the beach Saturday, yeah. played beach volleyball for four and a half, five I hours. A phone call next yeah, time, dude. Come yeah, on. we needed we needed two Christ. more players for uh, yeah. for four teams. Um, but yeah, it, I mean, it's been it's been great. Uh, I feel like now I'm you know finally installed in the house and everything. So. We're having a good time. Yeah, what's the status with that? Did you did you find a place? Are you renting? Did you buy immediately? What what are you? Yeah, buying? we're uh, we're renting a place now. We're buying it. We bought a place, but it has to be built. So oh, cool. Yeah, that's uh, that's a fun process, and it's really close. To, they're really close to each other, so you can we can go back and forth. But nice. Um, yeah, coming here in July and seeing the real estate here was kind of a slap in the face. <laughs> Dude, tell me about it. Different it. from Winnipeg. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> we were really seeing the reality of it and. You know, we had our, our expectations of what we were looking for and then yep. the reality of what we're going to find. Um, so, yeah, it was uh, it was a challenge, but we finally we f- yeah. finally found something that we, we love. We Did you, love. Had you spent a good amount of time in L.A. before this? Or, I mean, like- uh, yeah, it's weird. I mean, I came here when I was 16, 17 with a CAA camp that they do here yeah, right. um, that I remember, you know, vaguely going to Manhattan Beach and all that because sure. it was uh, – is that or sorry, sorry, El Segundo because that's where the practice rink is. Yeah. Um. So we spend time there, and then, you know, every time I've come here, I felt I felt like I had a day off or something. So we'd always come, you know, we'd always go around there and go for dinner around there and all that. So, uh, yeah, I feel like I know the place already a decent amount. So that's that's great. That's huge, man. I, I was actually thinking about that. Is like there can be such a shock when you go from one to the other, and it's actually. It's been kind of interesting talking to AI about, you know, in Mm -hmm. that trade, him going to Winnipeg and me being like, how is it, man? And I was on the phone with him the other day and he was like, dude, I'm on a seven hour drive up to Winnipeg. I was like, you're happy as a clam. He's just such an outdoors man. It works perfectly. But it is always awesome when you have a little bit of experience in that city that you're moving to. And it sounds like you've, you know, it fits like a glove being here. So it's also huge that you've been here this summer. Like that's, that was such a good move. I'm sure that was calculated by you being like. I don't want to show up, you know, day before camp. So yeah, yeah, and awesome. like we're going to Australia, so right. once <laughs> we come back, I'm not going to be no time. I'm not going to have any time to yeah, you're right to go it. anywhere and you know to like moving into the house. We had no furniture. We had to we had to figure that that part yeah. out, um, which was a lot, and we're still working on that. So uh, yeah, I, I had no choice but to come, and it's not like it was a hard decision to come here early. Yeah. Yeah. We, had, we were having a really fun time, yeah. dude. Isn't it crazy how much <laughs> stuff goes into filling a house like in my head i'm like we need you need a bed and a kitchen table and a coffee table whatever but then there's just like take i need little tables everywhere and Mm -hmm. like i i just go to put cups down and they just shatter i'm like all right (laughs) i'm I'm missing a million things like paper towel holders yeah yeah like uh, candles like stuff like that like if it was me it'd be just like a mattress on the floor and a chair (laughs) yeah and that's pretty much it you know and but you want it to feel like a home, not yeah, like yeah. you're just staying there for a little not bit. Not my garage. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> so you need like wall art and you yeah. need all of the things that go in the and kitchen. And a golf you simulator. Need, you need yeah. mixing <laughs> bowls and serving yeah. bowls. You need, it's insane. But yeah. I mean, shit, man. It, it sounds like you got some help with it. So yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, like I said, if it was up to me, it'd be a bed, yeah. a mattress on the floor yeah. and a chair <laughs> and like a, that's pretty much it. Yeah. Um, but my girlfriend, she's been really great with, you know, the wall art and yeah, all the yeah. decorations. Cause like I said, we, we're renting this place. Yeah. Um, but we want it to feel like a home, you know, oh, you sure. want, you want to be excited to come back to it when you come back from the road and you want to love going back to your house when you come back from the ring. So I think for me, the only way to do that is to put effort into it. So, oh yeah. No doubt yeah, about it's it. Been, uh, and, uh, it's you, been... you must be close to the boys. They're all down there, right? Yeah. 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 It's, yeah. uh, that's like the, probably the best part. <laughs> um, you now somebody said everybody has a bike. So oh. it's like when you're in middle school and you'll <laughs> take your bike, go to a guy's place, and there's eight bikes in the driveway. Yeah. And you're like, hey, everybody's here. You're like, yeah. nice, everyone's yeah. here right That now. is actually so cool. Dude, yeah. the, but the, the downside of that, though, is like you're out running errands or something, picking up some groceries, and you drive by one of your boy's houses, and all the bikes are out front, and, and you're, you're like, like, what the fuck? God damn yeah. it, dude. I didn't get the invite. Yeah, That's yeah I must have gotten lost. Or yeah, something. yeah, you're like knocking the door, and you're like, hey, yeah. my number's still the same, guys. I don't know what happened here. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh shit incredible yeah uh okay so i want to talk about your first year quick right so you're playing juniors you're like the leading scorer in the queue at 16 not, not, big, not bad not, not bad. bad and then you go third overall like dan said behind matthews in line a and you show up in columbus 20 tucks 48 points you break rick nash's record for most goals break Wierenski's record for most points as a rookie in franchise history how did you take that confidence of your success in juniors and just translate it to the nhl immediately what was that like yeah honestly it was it was tough because i went back at 18 yeah um and those matthews and line i played at at 18 and they had really good years yeah yeah, yeah. and then you know people were looking at you know people Who just looking at the, yeah, yeah people yeah. are looking at it like <laughs> oh this and i wasn't even supposed to go third yeah i remember i got drafted and you know matthews went and everybody applauded second line a went everybody applauded and i went and everybody was like what yeah and you could <laughs> see program, everybody like program, looking yeah. like who is this guy <laughs> um so you know i go back to junior um statistically i didn't have a better year at 18 than i did at 17 and you know nobody's watching k breton play at that yeah, point yeah, yeah, you know yeah. from anywhere else but k breton so you know people are looking at the statue and you're like oh he went back junior he's he's, he's a flop he's not going to do well blah 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 i go to world juniors um you know i i didn't have a great tournament i didn't even score a goal yeah people are like oh he's he's awful why did they draft him so i think that whole year um because i was playing good hockey just like i wasn't I want. I was playing to prepare to play in the NHL at 19. I right. wasn't playing just to score as many goals as I could. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so I think that whole year helped me out. Then at 19, I come in and you know towards this camp is the hardest thing. Super I've ever easy seen and in chill. My, <laughs> my first year, I wasn't ready. Like yeah. my, I showed up and I was like, I'm ready for this. And three days in, I couldn't skate. I'm not ready. I couldn't move. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. So you know, I was ready at 19, and then yeah, I had a good year and. Started playing with Panarin, which you yeah. know was was great. Uh, I got to learn a lot from him, and playing with him was fun. And guys like Atkinson, Josh Anderson, guys like that. So, yep. I also living with David Savard. I, I gotta say that that I was, was the ask. best decision yeah. I've ever made in my nice. life. Um, but yeah, it was uh, a lot of people had a lot to do with uh, with that first year in the NHL, and even to this day. Well, tell me about Savard. What was that like? Oh man, that. I mean, first I move in. With him, his wife, and his two kids. Yep. I'm 19. How old are the kids? Uh, Two and three or two and four. Oh, damn. Okay. You know, like they're- Yeah, yeah. And um, I walk in and I'm like, the kid's crying or something. He's coming <laughs> to me. I'm like, I don't know. Can I pick him up? Like, yeah. am I allowed to-, to How do you turn a, this yeah. thing off? Yeah. I'm like, I don't know what to do here. And, you know, the relationship that you create, um, you know, he's- He wasn't like a father. He's like a brother. He's like yeah, an older yeah. brother because we had fun together. Um, You know, there's nights where we'd watch TV and- you know, the three of us, him and his wife, would just talk for three hours. And, um, you know, when we'd go out, they would take care of me and, and help yeah. me out. And, you know, I'd wake up at noon the next day and he'd come yeah. back at, from, at noon with like, you know, gym class, music class, zoo, everything like that. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> like, oh, life's easy, man. He's yeah. like, yeah, I'm waking up at seven here with, yeah. with the kids. So, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it was it was really fun uh, to live at his place. And it you know, the two of them and his wife, they, they made my life so much easier, oh my God. you know, not having to do everything. You know, they, they gave me some responsibilities and, you know, they asked me if I could watch the kids at times and, and all that stuff. But, you know, coming back from a road trip, a two week road trip and not having to do your groceries yeah. at 19 years old dude, is, you know, it sounds easy and sounds stupid, but the stress that it takes no, away amazing. Was, was oh, huge. Dude, yeah. It's huge. We, I mean, we were talking to Kirby Doc the other day about the, he lived with Brent Seabrook. And we were talking about that factor of when you come back to a home rather than an apartment with a mattress on the floor. Yeah, yeah. Like it's just, so, it's got to be so much easier on your psyche to be like, this is good. Like I've got a home base with people who know how to take care of me and how to take care of each other. And then obviously having a guy like Savard who's like, I can show you the ropes and show you how to get into the league. Like that's just so awesome. Yeah. Um. Dude, you just said something that I think is super important for people to hear. You were talking about that final year in junior and you were playing hockey to prepare for the NHL, not put up as yes, many points. Yes, dude. I think that is such an important thing for hockey fans everywhere to hear the difference of. Can you talk about that a little bit? Like, how is that different? When you get drafted and you're like, all right, I'm a top five pick here. I'm going to the show soon. How does your mindset change and what is that preparation and, and the way you change your playing style like? Yeah, I mean, well, my dad's a coach. Yeah. So he's he's probably the number one person in my life in terms of, you know, helping me become who I, who I am today. Um, then I remember when I was in midget, he told me, because it was my draft year then too, he yeah. told me, you know, scoring goals is great, but winning games is the most important. Mm -hmm. So be the player that when a scout goes to see you, he says, you know, he does everything well. There's nothing, yeah, there's right. nothing he can do 
yeah, there's some stuff he could do better, but there's nothing that he's missing. And, um, you know, it's, sometimes it's boring, like having a good stick, being a yeah. right spot, being the F3 instead of diving in. Um, so that was like a, always in my mind. And then at my draft year, I got put, I was on the wing my whole life, never played center. My dad wanted me to play center. I, I didn't want to. Mm-hmm. I thought it was too complicated and too hard. <laughs> I was going to ask why. Yeah, was, okay. I was like, no, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a right winger and that's yeah. it. Um, and then I got put halfway through my season, uh, my draft year, I got put uh, center. And I was like, I, I, I told my coach, no, I, I don't want to. He's like, yeah, you're gonna. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, okay, I, I have no choice. Yep, so, yeah. you know, I played center and that was one of the best things that ever happened in my career, I think, because, you know, you get to play a little bit more defense. You get to think, yep. you have to think a bit more. You have to support your Ds and everything. But yeah, I, I think, like I said, you look at some of the guys. I mean, one's right here, Kopitar, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. Phil Deneau. Yep. You know, guys like that, that offensively, defensively, they're so good. Yeah. And uh, it's, just a, it's just as fun to watch, you know, and, could they score five more goals a year or 10 more points? Maybe, but would that lead to more wins? Probably not. Right. Um, you know, so guys like that are, have always been, you know, guys I've looked up to and, and tried to, to become. Yeah. It's amazing. And that's such a good point. It's like, yeah, you could maybe talk 10 more goals a year, but how many goals against is that leading to yeah, change exactly. your game that much? That's such a huge thing to think about that people don't. I really. love being F3, dude. I'm the <laughs> F3 king. Yeah. Yeah. Cl- look, yeah. Look for me trail it. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> Um, going into another thing that you said, you recently in an interview, going back to a team in your old division, said that mullet has the best ice in the show right now. Tell me everything about that. Like, why does it have the best ice? And then what about mullet was so fun? Because when that was announced, I was like, I think this is fucking awesome. (laughs) It's obviously not ideal for the long run, but in the short term, this could be an absolute blast. So when I saw that you had nothing but good things to say about mullet, I was like, let's go. Yes, dude. Like mullet is fun. Look, I was I was happy I played there once. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. So it wasn't was, that cool. I was good happy content. I played there once. Joe's fans right now are like, yes. And yeah. then now they're like, oh fuck. I was happy I played there once, but it was fun. Yeah. It yeah. was it was it was like nothing you'd expect in the NHL, to yeah, be yeah. honest. I mean, let's let's be real. You, you wouldn't expect that. Um but the ice was great. I don't know how, yeah. what they did or how they. I, I, I figure maybe like because instead of having eighteen thousand people, having five thousand yeah. to drink is. I, I I don't know how that works, but it was um it was fun. It was a fun experience. We got there. We we're the first game there, so I don't know right. the other games how the building was, but it was it was loud. Um, yeah. the room wasn't ready, so we were getting dressed on the like on a separate ice sheet, and they put a oh, floor okay. on it, no so the way, floor was dude. freezing. Um. We had just had like giant curtains, you know, yeah, hiding yeah. our room. And then we, so we, we got dressed in like, let's say the ozone. We warmed up in the neutral zone. And Dude. I'm pretty sure the coyotes Are you or another, like the refs or the coyotes were stretching in the like D zone. Yeah. yeah. So it's funny because you could hear the music and you could hear guys playing soccer. And, you know, when we were playing sewer, we had the whole neutral zone. So it was yeah. a, probably the most fun game of the year. For sure. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was a it was a weird environment to be in, but it was yeah. fun. You guys were putting you frozen fun. feet in your boots and you're like, That is Christ. insane. Because <laughs> I wanted to ask about the locker room, but it wasn't even ready. It wasn't ready, no. Yeah. So they played one game, then went back on the road. Because yeah. they started like, I don't know, a long time on the road. Yeah. Came back, played us, and then went back on the road. So we were the, so everybody when they talked, like when I told other guys, they're like, yeah, we were in the dressing room, normal dressing room. Yeah. Like, why didn't we get that? Yeah, yeah seriously. But yeah, it's because it wasn't ready. Yeah, like, I was on the face-off dot, dude. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is insane. What was, uh, like, obviously, you know, the difference between 18,000 and 5,000 is that that's clear. But what was the energy like? Was it, did it feel like a student environment or was it just like raucous because it's a little smaller barn and it's packed to the gills with all these people? Yeah, it was, it was, um, it felt like a quick game. Yeah. Like, oh, it felt like, because yeah. I feel like, Cause it's not, you feel like the ice is small. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it felt like a qu- quick game. We won in overtime. I'm pretty sure. Um, but the fans were wild, you know, yeah. I mean, yeah. the first game there, everybody had mullet, like the mullets. That yeah, they're yeah, yeah, away. Yeah. <laughs> um, it was, it was fun. It was a fun experience, but like I said, uh, you wouldn't expect it, you know? Yeah. We'd had no idea what to expect at the same time. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, the last time I played in, in a 5,000 seat arena was in junior probably. Yep. So yep. yeah, it was, it was a cool experience. Yeah. Wouldn't necessarily want to do it for 41 games yeah. a year. I mean, but that's it. It's also awesome that that was the first game ever or the first NHL game in yeah. Mullet. That's yeah. pretty sick to be able to hang your hat on. Yeah, that's exactly. And uh, in Columbus, we played the first game back at Nassau. 
Oh the, shit! Oh, yeah. That, that yeah, the first game back Damn. because they were you know that year they would they played like twenty games yeah. and and then a couple yeah. in Brooklyn, so that was the first game in Nassau when they came back and that was wild. Oh, that dude. game, uh, dude! That, yeah, that, that game about that. was that wild. That must have been yeah. crazy. That game, you know, <laughs> it was well first. You know, like the hotel is right across the street. Yeah. Oh yeah. Right. So all the Islanders fans are tailgating in the lobby of the hotel, <laughs> and then you have two choices: you could walk to the to the rink. Yeah. Or you could bust to go to the game. But, you know, you open your curtains in your hotel room and you look in the parking lot and yeah. it's full of people. And they all have their George Foreman grills yeah, and they're yeah. all grilling and drinking. You're like, I'm not walking. No chance I'm walking. Yeah. So, you know, you take the bus there and then warm up is packed. People are everywhere. They got all got they all got signs and posters. Um a lot of people are flipping you off. Oh, a lot that, of people are, are. I was gonna say they're intense fans. Islander That's fun. fans are different, dude. Yeah. They're oh, different yeah. people. And uh, <laughs> you know their team is it still is. They're hard to play against. Yeah. And um, I'm pretty sure they started like with the uh, Sezikis, Martin, and yeah. uh, Clutterbuck, or I think a Kunakul might have started that game. And you know the only thing they're like every time there's a hit the whole game. Yep. Yeah. Everybody get up and start yelling. It was uh, it was a wild game. Yeah. It was like a playoff game, and oh, must have you know, been, it's dude. ten thousand. So there's still a lot of people, but it was that was that was probably one of the most memorable games I played. Yeah, just like dude, that it's so epic. fun. Does anybody walk? Uh, I doubt it. That, can, can you, you, you imagine? Probably get her, like, yeah, yeah, you're getting, <laughs> you're getting, yeah. You oh gotta keep your head God. down like with your headphones. Four hours before puck drop, yeah, and you're dude, already locked shit, in, walking dude. through a sea of lunatics, dude. That oh is my awesome, God. dude. Yeah, That's so cool. Yeah, that was that was that was wild. That yeah. was, their fans are great. You know, they're yeah. they're the whole game. They're standing up every time they'd hit a guy. Everybody's getting up. So. Yeah, that was really fun. Yeah. I love that. We need more. I love the knowledgeable fan base. You know, it just gets like oh, yeah. mentioned on the it's big plays yeah. and everything. Um, well, speaking of hits, actually, one thing I wanted to ask you about, and maybe it's um, a little bit what you were talking about of the switch to center, but since you got to Winnipeg, your pims are way up, dude. Like way up. <laughs> so I was wanted to know if that, like, not that you're out there looking for a penalty, yeah, but yeah. is being more physical, playing a heavier game, roughing it up, you know, mixing it up in front of both nets. Is that was that a conscious effort? Was that a coaching decision, or are you just a goon now? Maybe you're a goon now. No, I only had one fight last <laughs> yeah. year, so I don't know if I call myself that. Yeah. But uh, I mean, yeah, would I love to take less penalties for sure? Yeah. Um, but you know, I think I think in the NHL, you know, if you're getting a lot of penalties, uh, I draw a lot of penalties too. So mm -hmm. there's that balance of, of it. Um, yeah, like obviously, it'd be great to finish the year with zero penalty minutes. Is that going to happen this year? Absolutely not. And you, you know, like playing, there's no chance. You wouldn't be playing the right game. I don't. Yeah, think, and, right. And, you know, and, no yeah. way. You got to smash. Yeah, and, and the way you know the way I play, I don't start a game thinking, all right, I'm gonna get a penalty here tonight. Yeah, I'm doing. I'm due the for way, one tonight. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I never. I don't think I'm ever due for one. You know what? I've been in the box in a yeah. while. I'm gonna just go and absolutely crinkle someone off. Yeah. The puck. <laughs> yeah, but the you know the way it goes. Um, I always my dad always taught me. You know, you sometimes you just got to go out there and if. If it's a hit, if it's a cross check, if it's a scrum, you know, you got to get something going and to score a goal, you could have a big hit, big fight, yeah. or just a scrum. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. It's, I grew up like we'd go out to the, the frozen pond mm -hmm. and there's two like rinks. There is the normal size one that we'd play, you know, 12 on 12. You know, there's no rules. Yeah. But then there's the one next, like right next to it that was probably, you know, 15 feet by, eight feet yeah and we play 4v4 and might as well not put a puck out there yeah we would just hit each other yeah. and it would always finish in a fight and it would always finish with somebody crying going home with yeah. a bloody lip or a, a bruise or whatever and um that was fun to me that was that was really Hell fun yeah. I, I i always loved that um my dad made me watch broad street bullies when i was like 12 Sick. and i thought that was the coolest thing ever oh yeah so yeah i mean i'm not I don't think I'll ever win. Is it the Lady Bing? Yeah. 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 I don't think I'll ever win the Lady Bing in my career. Um, but you know, I'm okay with that. I, yeah. I think it's fun sometimes. Well, you to... got the frame for it, dude. You know, I um, I when I was young, I was actually like, I was always pretty tall. I, I did. I wasn't the tallest in my crew till later in life. I had a late growth spurt, but I, for whatever reason, because he played D, he was always banging people around. But I played forward, and I was like, I grew up watching the Danglers and thought that was cool. But then I got big. 
And I'm in, uh, you know, playing juniors, like trying to like walk everyone at the blue line. And my coaches would be like, can you hit somebody? And I'd be like, no, I just want to be the small guy. Did. And I never did. So I think it's important. On Earth. I think it's important to use that frame and bang around, dude. You know, it impacts the game in a lot of ways. Yeah. Dude. Yeah, it's fun. And they're just games like, man, you said it. There are games where it's just getting chippy. And I love that. When it's just like, all right, people are just throwing shit around. Yeah. I'm going to get in the mix. That is the best feeling sometimes. Gets yeah. you in a game fast. Yeah. Right? Like, yeah. boom, hit someone first shift. And you're like, all right, here we go. Yeah, I've had a coach that told me best way to get in the game is first shift you get a hit yeah. and like i said it's not like i start a game i'm like all right i'm gonna get a penalty tonight yeah. or <laughs> i'm gonna get in something or i'm gonna start a scrum and there's some games that nothing happens but there's sometimes when the game gets chippy or i mean it's a physical sport exactly. and it's it's uh it's there's a lot of hitting there's fighting there's cross checks you know battles in front of the net everything like that there's a lot of emotion so yep. yeah what i love i'm gonna fin- what i love to get less penalty minutes i would love it yeah. yep but you know you you never know how it's going to go. So, (laughs) No, but I mean, I, I, dude, I think the the best mindset, I I think every coach, every player would appreciate that mindset because it is like those games, like uh, against the Islanders, those just pop up. And if you're uh, going out there being like, I don't really want to get into it with anyone. You're going to be off your game the whole time. So it's like, I promise you, I'd rather you go out there playing the way you want to play right now than go out there trying to win a lady big. Yeah. You know, yeah. yeah. You know, there's some like, uh, sort of like in when I was in Columbus, my first year, Torts would always tell me we play good teams, we play you know, top players, and he always say, "Don't be scared of them, don't be scared." Yeah. yeah. And um, I often start, so I would take the first face off against one of the top guys. Yeah. And we were playing um, Anaheim, and he goes, "Okay, tonight you're going to be playing against Ryan Kessler." Yeah. <laughs> I want you to cross check him first face off, <laughs> and I'm like, oh, "It's going to be a long. Do I want to do this?" Do but, I, how old were you? What year was Nineteen. It? Yeah, dude, come on. I'm like, he's like, no, no, you don't have to fight. You don't fight him. Just cross check him. He's like Luke. Just Luke. send a message because Ryan Kessler is the type of player who's going to be like this. Oh, good cross check. He doesn't want to fight. It's, this is fine. But the whole game. Yeah. Oh yeah. Dude. I'm like, oh, okay. So first face off. I don't even try to go for the puck. I just cross check. You him. did it. And yeah, because you told, told me. To oh, yeah. Do what are you going to do? Say no. To yeah. First? So I'm like, okay. I cross, and then the rest of the game was just At me and him yeah. back and forth. Scrum. He grabbed me by like my collar. I was yeah. on my knees. Yeah thankfully i think so far it was there and it was like yeah, yeah. pulling me back like, the other way son. yeah he's yeah. <laughs> pulling me back but uh yeah and i'm yeah, i think that game i got two penalties i got two penalties yeah. you know like that's just yeah. how it goes but did kes say something when you cross-checked him or was it just like he was like all right fine Here i don't think he i think he might have just slashed me and yeah yeah but it's a long game and we're oh, yeah. we're and they were at home so they were matching against our line yeah and the whole game was just slash cross-check slash cross and you know, but that's that's how it is, and it was yeah. it was a fun game, and yeah. but you know, at the end of the game, you finish with two penalty or four penalty minutes yeah. and a couple of scrums and all that, and <laughs> about seventeen new bruises. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I had like this like like cut in my neck from the jersey. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, those games are also fun. You yeah, know, the yeah. seven six games are great, but yeah, you know, most often than not, that's not how it happens. Right. You know, there's a lot of games that's two one and no. physical play, and no. uh, to me, those are just as fun. Hell yeah. You got a job to do. Dude. Yeah, dude. The guy's out of his fucking mind. <laughs> I love it. Um, all right. I want to talk about Winnipeg for a little bit. Uh, obviously, I feel like, I mean, you lived it. There was a crazy wind last season of, you know, where you were going to end up, if, if a trade was going to happen, what was going on. And I'm sure that that must have just been annoying as fuck at times. And I'm sure it was distracting at times. So, I don't want to talk about that. What I want to talk about is, which I feel like you you didn't really get the opportunity to talk about, what were some of the best parts of Winnipeg? Like, what were some of your favorite things about living in the city, playing with the team? So, uh, you know, I just feel like, well, well, so much of your last six months with that team was clouded about, like, where you were potentially going. I'd like to hear about, like, what were the things that you were loving and what, what was cool about playing in that city? Yeah, well, the first year was it was hard because it was COVID. Yeah, yeah. right. So I mean, no, no team dinners, yeah. no going out to a guy's house and getting to know him. Um, so that was everything was closed. Dude, I never so thought f- about that being a new player. Like it was hard enough on any on everybody during the bubble and all that stuff. But being a new guy on the team is like that's ridiculous. It, dude, it was the same for Toff. Like he yeah. he went over to Montreal and it was like I'm in this amazing new city. I can't do anything. Yeah, it's, man, it's crazy. Yeah, so that was that was hard. Um, so I was really looking forward to the second year to getting to know the guys because I felt like I didn't know anybody. Yeah. And, you know, we the next year we had training camp at the practice rink. I'd never been there, mm-hmm. you know, so Dude, there's so many so things. Crazy, yeah, yeah it, I felt like uh, it was my first year again. So that was that was uh, that was a challenge. But, you know, getting to know the guys, to the staff, my parents live in Winnipeg. So that was, you know, great to 
have my mom stop by, you know, That's five awesome. times a week, just 10 minutes away. So um, seeing my dad going to see the AHL games, seeing their team play, it was fun. And, you know, the people there are just so passionate. They're so nice. Yeah. Um, getting to play with guys like Shifley, Connor, Ehlers, Wheeler, Josh Morrissey, yeah. Hellebuck. Um, and then I think... I think anywhere you go, I think it's the relationships you create that that's like the best For part. Sure. No doubt, you know, like yeah. cities and and uh, all that's great. But you know the guys that you meet and every summer you see again. And you know I go to Michigan every summer and skate with Connor and skate with Hella Buck. And awesome. you know those those are I think the the best moments of of uh, of any anybody's time anywhere. Yeah, how wild does that barn get? I feel like those whiteout nights are insane, pretty crazy. Yeah, yeah. I, I actually had a friend who was he's he's an actor. And he got on a show that was shooting in Winnipeg and he, he hit me up randomly and was like, dude, you're a hockey guy. I feel like there's probably hockey in Winnipeg. And I was like, yeah, you should go to a game. And it was, he went during the playoffs two years ago. Okay. And I was like, get a ticket and go to that game. And he sent me a picture and he was like, this is by far the craziest experience of my life. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, dude, he's it's, never been to a hockey game. Yeah. And that's the first one he went to. And he was like, this is fucking mental. Yeah. Yeah. It, it I mean, the first year we made the playoffs, no fans. Yeah, dude. So like, once again, you know, I, what I was looking forward to the most was the fans in the playoffs. Yeah. And make the playoffs, make it a second round, no fans. So, and then that last year, or I guess two years ago, yeah, I, yeah. I always refer to the hockey season. Yeah, yeah. Last, yeah. Last, I the, same the thing. season before, <laughs> we didn't make the playoffs. Right. And then last year, we made them. Um, and you know, the fans in Vegas were wild. Then you get to Winnipeg, and everybody's in white. Everybody's just like warm ups packed. Yeah. Yeah. You know, warm up God. is packed. Everybody's there. Nobody's sitting down for almost it feels like the whole game every time there's a hit they're getting up you know it, it was great it was unbelievable to experience because you see it on tv um i saw i saw it on tv growing up and i thought it was so cool so to get to experience that in person was was uh, pretty wild and you know we lost in five so it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't um the ideal situation but i'm really happy i got to see the the wide out uh you know, before before I left, dude, and you that, guys gave him a battle in those games. I yeah. feel like the, that series. I mean, Vegas obviously proved to be very tough, and they were just a wagon. But um, and I was saying to Dan when that play when that series was going, I was so bummed you guys didn't get the one you got at home just for the fans because yeah. they were going so insane. But yeah, it was, you guys played them really hard, and and I know you get that extra jump, you know, when you're out there and they're going so mm -hmm. insane for you. That's awesome. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah, it was it was a tough series. I mean, they are they're. They're, they're the best team. They're yeah, yeah, yeah. They're the best team. Whether, you know, there's no opinion about it. They were the best team they won. And I think to win the Stanley Cup, you go in four rounds. There's no, there's luck to get to certain points, but to win it all, you got to be the best team. But yeah. they were, you know, they were such a good team. And, you know, you, you look at it, you know, before every playoffs, you, you look at a team and you go, okay, what are the weaknesses? Where can we? And they didn't have any weaknesses. Dude, and their real. weaknesses played well and did well, or they changed yeah. some stuff. And, yep. you know, and then it became not a weakness anymore. Yep. So, yeah. Yeah, they're they're a great team. What was the uh, what was your go to off day in Winnipeg? There's this place. Uh, actually, I love this place. Grocery store, Italian grocery store called Deluca's. Okay, oh, fuck yeah. Okay, good pizza, great coffee. The people are phenomenal. Yeah, great food. So I'd go there even if I didn't have to do groceries. I'd just go there and have a coffee. Is it hanging uh, out? Yeah, the Italian family <laughs> owned yeah. and run. Yeah. Yeah, those are the best, man. Yeah, oh, great God. people. So I, I'd like to say thank you because I was there a lot. Um, you know, I'd often stop by my parents, go say hi. Yeah. Um, there's this place called the Forks, another good. Co I love coffee, so yeah. Um, you know, I spend a decent amount there, and then at the end of the year, we found a golf simulator oh, that we spent fun, a yeah. decent amount of time at. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, those I'd say those things, and then I played a, a decent amount of video games too. Yeah. Uh, Nothing wrong with. So, wait, what's yeah. the go to? Actually. Before I even say it, I am assuming you're a FIFA guy. Yeah. Are you also a Formula One guy? Yeah. Yes. Have you played that game? Yeah. It's hard as shit. Do you but sim it's awesome. Monaco? Uh, I put all like the assists on it because yeah, I can't. Yeah. There's you, no way you can do it. Literally not There's possible no, no. to race it. It's unbelievable. Even with all, everything how like assisted. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. I I'm get three laps in. Yeah, yeah, I get three <laughs> laps in, and then it's yeah. done. I'm um, like this. Fuck this, dude. <laughs> in the wall. Again. Unbelievable. Like, yeah. God damn. Um. All right. So what are the go-to video games? FIFA, yeah, that that's like ninety percent of my to time. To me too, exactly okay. the same. Um, and then a little bit of Call of Duty, like when the guys are playing. Mm, yep, it's fun. And like with my friends from back, you know, how guys are like, we don't text for three months, but we play Call of Duty in the yep. group chat, and then like we just sit in the group chat, yeah. for an hour, not even playing, just yep. talking. <laughs> and then we refuse to text each other. Yeah, yeah. Refuse oh, yeah, to call. Refuse to FaceTime. I haven't seen them. In I haven't years. seen <laughs> them in a year, yeah. but we're always on Call. So th that was fun and. I have a lot of friends that play, and um, 
I do like you, it. But do you headset it when you play Call of Duty? Yeah. <laughs> Dude, you have to. Okay, you have to. Have yeah, you communicate? Tuned, have you, you have tuned? To. So like this ex- this exact scenario is have you seen that video? It's been circulating online. It's it's just the screen of a Call of Duty map. And you just hear one of the guys go, If I was going through something, would you guys be there for me? And all of his buddies go like this, No, absolutely not. One of the guys like one of the guys goes, I hope whatever you're you're going through is absolutely beating the shit out of you. <laughs> like that is the quintessential like haven't that's, talked that's to the these boys. guys in years, but you log on and you're locked you're at war, dude. Yeah. You're at war together. It's unbelievable. That's fucking that's exactly what I'm picturing you yeah. with those boys. Oh yeah. It's <laughs> oh, that's phenomenal. Yeah, it's it's it. honestly I I die first every time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> But then I talk the most, yeah. Yeah. and you know you're going through like clicking through the guys' screens. You're like, I see a guy in the back. You're kind of assisting them. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 But yeah, it's uh, it, you know, those are that's really fun. Yeah, yeah. it's the best, dude. dude. Yeah. I'm basically a spotter when I play COD because I'm I'm yeah. trash at COD, and I'm just like, listen, a nice like a walk to the Italian grocery for a quick coffee, hit the golf simulator, and finish it up with some COD with the boys is a, pr- that's a pretty a national nice, day. Pretty yeah, pretty nice national day. 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 Fucking love that's it. That's fantastic. Uh, okay, now for the first time ever. Oh, yeah. We are going to slide into the next sponsored question of the Internet's podcast brought to you by iSlide. For everyone watching, I hope you can see this incredible <laughs> slide sandal. We don't have to do this, but it's, it's a amazing. Sick slide sandal. It's a six slide you're, sandal. Uh, you're getting a pair of these. Oh, really? It's oh, that you size? Should, you should. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully, yeah. It's like yes. a dog bed. Yeah. That, dude, you see all these NBA guys showing up to games in crazy fits. If you showed up in two of these, you'd break the internet. I'd break the internet. Yeah, it's like the red boots that yeah, broke the yeah. internet. This, yeah. <laughs> it's exactly Same thing, it's yeah. Dude, fucking perfect. Okay, the I slide question for you. Yes. Because I love to wear slides around the locker room when I'm chilling. So yeah. pretty much every team we've ever been on, there's a, there's a bunch of different guys in the locker room. There's the DJ guy, the naked guy, you know. Yeah. So what I want to know is, what guy are you? Are you the the longest shower guy, the last of the shower guy? Do you have superstitions getting dressed? Like what what's what's your vibe in the locker room? I was forced to be DJ in Columbus. Oh, oh, wow, young. Yeah, yeah, damn, too young. I wasn't How ready. Much? I wasn't ready. <laughs> that is aggressive. I was not ready for it. How much French hip hop did yeah. you shove down their throats? <laughs> I got chirped too bad, so yeah. I stopped. Yeah. But, but me, I'd always stay in the dressing room because my first year I didn't play uh, sewer ball because. As a rookie playing sewer ball is yep. yeah. tough. It's, yeah, yeah, it's also yeah. dangerous. Yeah. yeah. So I just stay in the dressing room, take my six, and so would Panarin. And I played a, fr- a Russian song for him. He loved it. Didn't say anything. So I played a French song to see how he'd feel about it. Didn't say anything. So I was like, okay, we're on to something here. Yep. So I played my French rap when everybody'd be gone. And then when he left, Bjorkshan would be that guy. So I'd play some Danish rap for him. And then I played my French stuff. Um, but yeah, I. Uh, when I got put in that position, I wasn't I wasn't ready for it. Yeah. Um, it was stressful. <laughs> a lot, a lot of sleepless nights. Yeah, thinking about shuffling playlists. through the playlist, yeah. and be like, Man. I got to get this one out. I yep. didn't like the reaction yep. from anybody. Some people live for it. I'm with. I think it's stressful. It is. That. Like when someone's like this. Hey, can you put some music on? I'm like, oh my god. I guess. Like, do you? I don't know if you're gonna like my music. This is. A, but this you grow video. into it. You yes. grow because I love music. I li- I like yeah. listening to everything. So you grow into it. But you know. N- everybody there's never a dressing room where every guy loves the song right there's yeah, always sure. the one guy that's like change yeah and there's 18 <laughs> other guys that are loving it. and and the one guy that says change, the change it stresses you so out tough. you start you start sweating you're like you're doubting yourself you're like <laughs> i don't know if this next one's good right, either you thought they were heaters but now yeah. you're like oh fuck dude. Yeah. The, guy, the guy who's doing that too is being so loud about it he's yeah. like get this off yeah like, and you're like jesus christ man come on what are we doing here yeah so that's uh i'd say that um then it even in winnipeg uh, I was a DJ there. Hellebuck was a DJ a little bit too. Josh Morrissey last year. Um, but yeah, so that's stuck with me. I don't know about here. But maybe. You've I wouldn't mind not. Yeah. I'm not going to force it. Yep. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we'll see. And then the other thing is I I don't know why. It's not even like I take my time after games, but I'm always like the last guy out. And it's not like you know people think, oh, he goes in the gym and works out for an hour and a half, and then he goes in the sauna for 45. That's why. I honestly don't like I, I work out. I do the workout yeah. that we have to do. I go in the sauna for five, 10 yeah. minutes. I go in the hot, cold tub. Five. I don't even take that much time, but I'm somehow always the last guy out. You're in the COD dude, chat room, dude. I'm, just I don't, <laughs> yeah. I've got, no, dude, you're like, I'm talking to the boys. I've yeah. got bad news for you. You do take that much time because there's no way this is a coincidence. I know. I, I don't know. I eat. Well, you know what? I maybe, talk. It's a, maybe it's you take a little bit longer with everything. It's not like one thing. It's not, you're not yeah. in the sauna for 45 minutes you're just like you do take your time getting undressed 
do the full workout, take a little bit extra time in the sauna, maybe a little bit extra time doing this and that. Yeah. And like, but if you're the last one out every time, like you're taking a while. No, nah, I mean, I can't deny it. The facts, <laughs> the facts are there, <laughs> yeah. but um, yeah, I, I like talking. I like talking yep. to guys after, especially after a win, oh, you know, like oh, everybody dude, wants to no talk doubt. and it's, it's just so, so fun. And the media comes in like 15, 20 minutes after. So I take that 15, 20 and we put music in the dressing room. Yeah, and yeah. You know, after that win song, 75% of the guys are gone. So I can play some French rap if yep. I want to, there you go. but yeah. Um, yeah, those two things I'd say are are, dude. We yeah. uh, because I'm like you, I'm last one <sighs> out. So in school, in prep school, I would like miss dinner. Like the dining hall would be closed by the time I got out of practice because I'm just like fucking around with the mm -hmm. boys. And now in beer league, we always drive together, <laughs> and he's ready to go immediately. Not immediately, but like you're well, ready to go. Well, it depends because I'm 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 a Jekyll and Hyde. Because if we win, I'm like you. Yeah. I'm like give me. A thousand beers and I'm hanging. But if we lose, I I unzip my equipment like a costume and I'm out. I'm in the shower and I'm like, give me the fuck out of here. He comes out, shower, change, and I still got half my gear on, dude. And he's so mad. And I'm like, drive separately, dude. Like, <laughs> That's what I have to do. Yeah. My When I live with Savard, never drove to the ring together, never drove back together. That's so funny. Yeah, because I did was- you, Did connected. you guys learn that quick? Did you like, drive oh, yeah. together day one? And then he was like, I can't fucking do this. I can't wait for you. I think, yeah. I think he drove me the first day. Yeah. And I had to cut everything short. Yeah. Because he had kids. He wanted to go home. Yeah, he's like, right? I have children. And I'm, <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I, I have nothing else to do today. So I'm going to yeah. stay here until four actually, if I have to. This is actually all I had on yeah, the show. This, yeah, <laughs> this is what I was looking forward to, talking after practice. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, yeah, I I hurried up for him. Yeah. But I was like, I did not like that. Because yeah, now dude. I come home and like they're going to their class or they're going to something with the kids. And I'm just like, I, I my day's over. Myself. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, uh yeah, that was that was the end of it. And then last year, uh, Nate Schmidt lived two minutes from my house. I love Nate Schmidt. Yeah. Love him. <laughs> okay. And he can talk like yep. nobody on this planet. And he told me, oh, we should drive together to the ring for a game. I was like, and driving to the ring, I like listening to my music. Yeah. Not even superstition. Yeah. I just like chill, listen to my music, not a talk. And that's impossible with Nate. <laughs> so we drove together, I think, four or five times. And I think I... Like I said, great guy, sit next to each other on the plane, you know, play yeah. cards with each other, yeah. but go into the game. And then I think he got that early. So we drove four times together and then that was the end of it. And he didn't say anything. I didn't say anything, yep. but I think wow. just I not think a fit. He, you guys think, just mutually ghosted each other and you're like, I think that was, yeah. But, uh, yeah, he's, uh, if you guys want somebody on the pod that talks, yep. I don't know if he's been. Yeah, but no, he's, no. He's got. Oh, yes, yeah. that's, that's he, he's got stories for days. He has notes, takes notes in his phone. Well, see, that's to, the guy. Just like, I, that's, that's the guy. That's one of the guys. I need that guy. And yeah. that's the guy you want Story on your guy. team and oh, you yeah. want at your party and you want everywhere you want to go to the restaurant with because he he's like nobody I've ever met. I He's he's unbelievable. I feel like he wow. would have been great in the carpool post game after a win. Oh, yeah. You oh, know, like oh, it would have yeah. been awesome. Yeah. He must be great in the locker room. After great. The game. Yeah. Oh, my. oh, never. I imagine they're like shutting the lights off you guys on you guys. Yeah. At the, at and you can't the see anything, yeah. but you can only hear his it's voice. It's just you yeah. two. Yeah. still yeah. going. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, that is perfect. Taking a quick break to tell you about iSlide. iSlide is the leader in custom slides for your locker room. You could be coaching peewees. You could be skating in beer league. iSlide has what you need to be looking great and get ready for the season. They've got every NHL team. They've got over a hundred colleges. They've got other pro sports leagues and especially they got a sick empty netters line. So head over to islideusa.com to rep whatever squad you want. That's I S L I D E U S A.com and use promo code netters for 20% off your order. Now back to the episode. So have you been with any of the boys? I mean, like with, with some summer skates on, on the Kings yet? Yeah. Yeah. We got, I mean, I got here. We were four or five so august 7th yeah, yeah and then every week it'd be more and more and then i think like two three weeks ago we we're already like 15 perfect and then yeah. now the whole team's here yeah um but, so you're getting a vibe for who who's who on the kings yeah so yeah. who are who are some of the standouts like what are their what are their vibes okay well dewey to yeah. start yeah oh dewey, dewey. <laughs> he he he's got that nature made in him where he's talking all the time yeah. chirping everybody yeah. but it's great because you know new guys like me and young guys everybody feels like they can talk because he's chirping everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Whether it's your first day there or, you know, he, to him, everybody's the same and <laughs> it creates this environment where everybody can talk and it's great. So it's been really fun. So he's the guy that 
loves to chirp, loves to, to talk to everybody. He's so got that great. laugh, dude. He's got do, that do laugh. laugh Dan. Do you do it? I can't really do it that well, but it is it is without question the funniest laugh in the history of yeah. the National League. It's so and it's so contagious. Yeah. He could be talking about my family <laughs> member having terminal cancer and I would be fucking yeah, cracking okay. up. It's unbelievable. Yeah, so great, he, he he's great. Um so he's been fun. And then uh Byfield, he's also a great guy, really yeah. funny and, and a liar. And yeah, and I've been liar. told <laughs> Don't listen liar. to anything he says, because <laughs> this guy will say whatever he wants. You have no idea if it's true. Um, Dewey has Dewey has a little bit of that today, or of that too. Like today, he said uh, he was at one point the number one ranked player tennis player in Canada, <laughs> and I was like, no chance. And he went with it for twenty seconds, and he's like, all right, that was a lie. Yeah, we're I like, made that up. Yeah, no, like <laughs> no shit, dude. Yeah, oh, but yeah, so. Yeah, Q has that. Um, honestly, everybody's everybody's super nice. I played with Gavrikov in, yeah, in, yeah. in Columbus, yeah. so to have yep. him here, Dude, that's been great. You got to make sure to tell Gav not to mention that you were the DJ in Columbus, because then you're fucked. Then you're the DJ for a long, long time. Yep. Yeah, that's true. Uh, you gotta, hopefully, you, forgot about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to like text him <laughs> yeah, today. Yeah. Just, Yo, by the way, I will not be DJ. Don't yeah. do that to me. <laughs> yeah, I'll. Uh, I don't even know if he remembers, so I'm, yeah. I think I'm just gonna like not say anything. Don't bring it up because yes. I knowing him, he'll be like, "Oh yeah, yeah, yeah." Yeah. Um. But yeah, getting to know the guys. Phil Dino just got here uh, like a week ago, Same. so seeing him was yeah. was great. Guys like Kopitar that yeah, you know, I watched growing up was just, it was fun getting to know him. But yeah, all the guys are great. Like I said, we went to play volleyball the other day for five hours, Sick. and. Uh, yeah, I mean, you got to weigh us in next time. Isn't beach volleyball awesome? Is like dude. My greatest yeah. Oh my god! In the summer ever. Yeah. It's so fun. And it's yeah, we were there. I mean, that was the first time that that many guys, well, that I've been a part of that many guys played because we've been in it was like two on two or three on three stuff like that. Yeah. But we were like fifteen, so you, you have to split into yeah, teams, yeah. and it's oh, yeah. and it gets competitive. Oh, winter, winter yeah. stays, and yeah, 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 and winter stays, and and then there's frustration, and there's so yeah, and um, yeah, we play this fun like variation of volleyball. That's go really on. Because uh, I was I was gonna bring up a game to you, but maybe. Ace, yes, yes. yes. Let's it is go. probably the best yes. game I've ever Ace played. Is Ace. the most fun game of all time. It took me a, it oh. took me a little bit to understand. I the got the um, you know the ball got stolen away from me once. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah dude, and you're be the ready. guys were upset. Yep, and I was like, I don't get it. You're it's like, fine. Sorry, They're like, no, no, no. You it's have to fine. get the ball. Yep. Yeah. So yeah, we played Ace. That was that was really fun. But, I love uh, Ace, dude. Yes, yeah, it's, it's a it's a fun game. Best game. It makes a fun game even better. Oh yeah. And dude, oh, yeah. not everyone knows about that, but that game, by the way, because yeah. we'll go places and people are like, you want to play beach volleyball? And I'm like, we'll, we'll be like, you want to play ace and teach them. And then for weeks after they're like, dude, ace, 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 ace. Yeah. Like every weekend I'm like, yeah, yeah, dude, that's awesome. So speaking of LA, you had a pretty unique situation this past year where it's like the, the trade starts going around and you, you'd even mentioned that you kind of were in a position where you kind of got to pick your future here. So Walk us through that. What was that like? How did the decision happen? And I got to know, were there other suitors? Yeah, you, other you can say, like, what else <laughs> was on the say, table? Yeah, you yeah. can say, but, like, were there other options where you were like, shit, like, I might do this, I might do that, and how'd you end up here, and who were the others that were maybe in the mix? Yeah, it was interesting because I was on the phone with, with my agent, Pat, like, yeah, yeah. twice a day. And to the point where I was like, I feel bad for him yeah. having to call and his, me. And his other clients. Yeah, I'm like, I, <laughs> but yeah, he, he was great. So to have that communication with him from the start was was um, um, unbelievable. And it's a weird situation because you're an RFA, but at the same time, um, you know, you have a year left yeah. until you're a UFA. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of teams that called. Um, and then there's some teams that call and it's like, how is this going to work? Yeah. How, how is this even possible? Yeah. You know, and um but yeah, there's uh there's a few teams at the end of the day. There's a, some teams that at the beginning I, I thought of and I thought could be fun. Um, and then, you know, kind of the list dwindles down because some teams can't make it happen, the cap, all that yeah. stuff. Um, and then also I was at the point where, you know, I went to Columbus, I didn't take a long term deal. Winnipeg, I didn't take a long term deal, but I wanted a long term deal. Yeah. And um I wasn't you know, I didn't want to do another one year and kind of see what would happen. Right. I wanted I wanted the the security of it. So you know, at the end, it came down to a few teams, and the Kings were, were one like of them. Like what teams? <laughs> <laughs> we're I mean, here think, now, dude. You can say. Yeah, I mean. And we can cut it later we can if cut you it want. Too. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah, I mean, there's the obvious team that Montreal, Montreal. That, yeah. Uh, yeah. That, was, that was in the mix for a while. And you know, I, I, at the end, I, I, I didn't have a one team that I was like, I have to go play for. Yeah. 
you know, I always thought, and I still think in life, everything happens for a reason. And there's always, you know, sometimes choices that come to you. Yeah. And the more we talk to the Kings, um, you know, cause I had permission to, to talk, the more we talk to the Kings, the more it just sounded like it made more and more sense. You know, the more pl- pressure they're applying, the more, um, interested they sounded in more and more we talked to them. So every day was like, okay, the Kings is, is interesting. Could be fun. Could, they're a good team, you know, a good mix of veterans and young guys. Yeah. Um, one of the hardest teams to play against. So I thought that could be fun. And then you talk to them the next day and it sounds even better. And the next day is even better. And then the next day you're like, holy crap, this, I think this is like the only team that, you know, I, I could want to go to. And that's kind of what happened. The decision, like I said, kind of made itself for me. Definitely, dude. And that was, that was what was really fun about it. Um, cause like I said, there's, there's a couple options on the table, but the Kings almost made it, uh, they made it like it wasn't a decision to make. It was them and, and nobody else. So that was, that was great to have from, from the team that you're going to eventually play for potentially. So yeah, once that uh, once I figured that out in my head, then after that it was you know all the how to make the trade happen, the contract and all that. Um, but it was it was pretty simple at that point. Yeah, dude, what a beautiful way to put that. I think because that having the stress and the pressure of all of that stuff go away because it feels so right. You know, like I, I forget how you just phrased it, but like making the decision for you. This is a massive inflection point in your life coming into this yeah. right this deal and. To not have to be like thinking back constantly with not regret, but just like what could have been, what ifs, what ifs, what ifs. But it's like no, it was it was only one path when it narrowed down. Yeah, um, that that is awesome. Yeah, and it's like I'm twenty. I just turned twenty five. I was twenty four. I mean, my birthday is in June. So yeah. I, yeah. Um, and then you're looking at it, you're like, hey, eight years, twenty five now. I'll be thirty two or thirty three yeah. when it's done. Yeah, like That's a big I'm at choice, a dude. way different point. Like I think let's say you sign eight years to at twenty mm-hmm. to twenty eight. You're not that different. You yeah, know, you yeah, are. Sure. You are, but you're still in your twenties. Yep. Twenty five to thirty three is crazy. Way different. Yep. So Dude, we're talking like there's possible marriage. There's possible kids in yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. There's, there's a lot. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not on. just you anymore. Yep. Um. So that's where I had to think of everything. You know, the hockey. My dreams to win a Stanley Cup. Yep. There's no doubt about that. Yeah. Um. So I wanted to go to a place where I could win, and L. A check that box yep and then there's a few other things in there that it's like the lady know. bang yeah yeah yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah i mean there's a there's there's i mean my dream is just to win a stanley cup yep and that's i mean that's pretty simple it's just yeah. that yeah um so at that point it was like hey which seems check that box and then you go down the list of what i was looking for and la just had them all yeah. and and then where you, where can i not afford a house okay great California. yeah <laughs> where is it gonna be complicated <laughs> to find a house yeah um but yeah so that uh that was that and then you look at the team you look at everything else that comes with it um and then like i said the 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 passion that they were putting behind it trying trying to make it happen you know the the interest the things that they're saying the the vision that they had for the team and and for me and my career and all that you know, i looked at it and i was like this is how can i not go here yeah you know how can i not go to the kings so once once i figured that out then that was it. It was yeah. it was the Kings, and it feels good too, right? Like kind of having yeah. having someone pursue you For that sure. hard, yeah, right? yeah. yeah that's I, th- that's what everybody wants, yep. you know. At the end of the day, that's what everybody wants. Um, so yeah, once once I figured that out, it was how can we make this happen? Yep. And, yeah, and then we'll go from there. Did you call Gav? You I called him. Yeah, three or four days before the trade because we well, got to well, the, but you'd already decided. We got to the point where it was like, hey, you're gonna have to make a decision here. Yeah, and. um I just called him. I asked him what he thought, what he thought of the Kings, what he thought of the organization, all that. Yeah. Um, and he had nothing but good things to say. And, you know, that's, I wouldn't say that, like, that didn't make it or break it for me, but that was really reassuring to hear. Right? Um, and to ask him about the the players and the group of guys, because I, I didn't know um, many guys on the team. So, you know, he told me the guys are great. They're really fun. You know, they hardworking guys and all that. So, um, yeah, it reassured me. But, yeah, there's a, a lot of questions that were that were uh, yeah. asked on that call. Man, it is. I mean, I love hearing you say the decision made itself. That because that that is something that does happen in life every now and then if you're lucky. Mm-hmm. So at this point in your career and your life, more importantly, for that to happen is such a good feeling. And I gotta say, as a fan, you know, we were obviously this was a big thing that was on a lot of hockey fans' radar and the Habs had come up when your name would, would circulate and, and we were kind of being like, yeah, I wonder where I'll end up. And then when this one happened and it was like PL to the Kings, 
it was one of those things where truly just as a fan of the game and we're obviously close with the Kings and, and big fans of the team. It was one of those things where the second it happened, I was like, oh, wow, that's perfect. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't even necessarily on my radar. And then it it happened and I was like, that's going to be a perfect fit. And then hearing all of the pieces that came into play when you were making the decision, that makes so much sense. And then it sounds like, I mean, you being here this summer, it's like everything's going so smoothly. So it's like... We're off to the races so far. It's, were it's were like, they on your radar at all? Yeah. But, oh, really? Yeah. Okay, so you're like, maybe that's possible. Yeah. There's yeah. a there's like a there's a list of a couple teams that you know from the start. I was like, I, I'd like to yeah. potentially play for. Yeah. The Kings were one of them. That's cool. But like I said, I didn't know you know what their plan was. I didn't know anything. Um. So until I heard everybody's plan, or you know, some teams could make it happen, or cap, or all that stuff. So yeah, they were one of the teams that. That I was like, that could be really fun. That could be interesting. Good team could win a cup. Um, yeah, they were one of the teams that okay, I, I yeah. was thinking of. Yeah, so, and you kind of uh, mentioned, um, you know, you Chris said you you came into the league, you had an amazing first year, and you've you've been so great every year of your career. And you you know, in an interesting situation with no long term deal in in Columbus, and then the trade to Winnipeg happens that kind of surprised some people, and then you played great in Winnipeg, and then this happens. How exciting is it right now? And how good does it feel to like have that long-term deal? And you're like, this is home. Here we go. Yeah. And you're on a great cup contending team with some unbelievable players. You know, you're playing and learning from guys like Kopi, who you grew up enjoying watching and is, you know, the, the picture of a great successful center. It's like, there's a lot of exciting stuff going on right now. Yeah. Yeah. Ever since I got traded um, here, it's been, it's been really exciting, you know, getting texts and calls and from the players at the start and then calls and, from management and all that, getting to know everybody, it's been it's been really fun and it's all it's gonna be a long season and it's yeah. it's eight years. It's gonna be a and um but like Nick Felino, he, he told me once, you never know what's gonna be your your year to win. Yep. And it could be your your first, it could be your second. So on a eight year deal, it could be any of those years. Um, but to be able to to build, you know, with a team and and help build that that culture that is already unbelievable. It seems like here, um, it's it's fun. It's a fun challenge to have because you know, as, especially as a center, but I think in any position, you know, if you want to win, you have to do stuff that sometimes you won't get credit for. Yeah. You won't get the points. Totally. You won't get, but, you know, when you're playing, when you're playing on year to year deals, you know, it sometimes could be hard to, to remember that, you know, and it's playing on the one year deals, you know, you don't score for five games, but the team's winning. I was always taught winning is the most important thing, not goals. Mm-hmm. but you know when you're going to go at the end of the year to negotiate the team's not going to re- remember yeah. that you helped the team win they're going to remember the, the goals that you scored um so to be able to have that eight-year deal and just look at you know to my left and say if i can get this guy a goal or yeah. if i look to my right and say this guy's been scoring five games how can i get him a goal you know even if it means i don't get one yeah you know that's that's a good it's a fun feeling for me to have um because yeah winning you know if i finish my career with a thousand games and 700 points or 600 points or 750 i won't care yeah but if you finish with no cup you'll care you'll care yep. yep so that's kind of how i see it and i look at this eight-year deal and i say okay i can i can potentially help a team um you know win a stanley cup which is a really good feeling to have and you could do it on a one or a two or a three i'm not saying that you can't but on an eight you can help build that but, but the job security block. helps remember the lesson from your dad from when you were a kid, like about, you know, it, you don't have to score a million goals to try to get your, you know, like win, win mm-hmm. yeah. games, play well, yeah. do all the things right, win. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, last year you had career high points. You were like one off career high goals, you know, but you were like, you set that the year before, you know, and you started so hot last year firing. We had a lot of talk about what we think your ceiling can become on this Kings team. Maybe you're playing with a guy like Fiala or something. Obviously, winning the cup is the goal. You know, we want the team success for sure. But do you have any benchmarks that you think about for your season? Thirty goals, seventy points. And are there, are there things you're like, I want to hit that? That's a priority. And, and priority is team success. But do you have any yeah. any benchmarks like that? Oh uh, no, and it's funny. You know, me and Kevin were talking about this the other day. Um, I don't go into games thinking I got to score tonight or I got to get an assist. I want to go out there and dominate a game. Yeah, and I want the line that I'm on to want to dominate the other line that we're playing against. And I think if you do that every game, you the points will come. You know, if you play well, the points will come. I don't think you think of points and then they come. I think if you 
If you do the right things defensively, if you have a good stick, you'll get the puck back. Um, you know, if you forecheck well, you get the puck back. I think if you do all the little things before the points, then the points come. Yeah. So, you know, the game you talk about like the ceiling and what I'd like to become as a player. I don't think I'm I'm close to it yet. Yeah, agree. And um, you know, the fun part of that is, you know, there's some nights you finish a game, you have zero points, team one, and you were a force out there. Yeah, it's such a good feeling. Uh, yeah, you know, everything zero goals, zero assists doesn't matter because you you know you played well. And um, so yeah, when I look at what I want to become as a player, points wise or all that, I think if I become the player that I want to be, then is it 70, 80, 90, 100? Yeah, like yeah. who knows? But to not have to think about that, I think is the key for me personally. Yep. Um, you know, I think it, they all come one after the other, and the last part is the points, not the other yeah, way around. That's cool. So yeah, that's that's kind of how I like. So to you see don't it. you okay. don't start games like. I need to get a point tonight. You do start games like I need to take two penalties. Yeah, I'd yeah. like to take <laughs> under three. I like to take the under on three. Tonight. I am overdue for a slashing call. Yeah. So yeah, but I'm more most than I mean. I go. It's funny you say that because sometimes I go like five games without penalty, and I'm like, oh, I feel like I'm gonna get, and I don't want to. Yeah, yeah. I want to keep the stretch going. Yeah, I know it's coming. I just, yeah, yeah, it's a like, self-fulfilling I, prophecy. Yeah. You're like, to, uh, yeah. fuck, um, <laughs> after, I'm on a good streak. Yeah, what's gonna happen? And after the first face off, a guy cross checks you, and you're like, okay. I'm not going to try to get penalty, but this game probably <laughs> yep, will get chippy <laughs> and then it's going to happen naturally. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that's like the only thing, honestly, that's on my mind for going to a game sometimes is yeah. I don't want, I, I've gotten two penalties in the past or a penalty a game in the past three games. I can't have a penalty. Yeah. I can't get one tonight. Right. And for those sure. are usually the games you get one. Yeah. But. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's really how it works. Dude. I love that mindset though. Like the go out and dominate. That's that definitely ties into the, you know, do everything right thing and it's like you're right you do that and then results come so yeah it's beautiful and and if everyone has that mindset by the way you guys are deep man so it's like if you pass that on if people are looking at your game and there's people other guys in the kitchen doing this too but if they're looking at your game and you're not out there point hunting you're out there trying to do the right thing and that mentality gets down through the through the lines you become a very tough out yeah and i mean kopitar to know and yeah. a bunch of guys on the team but you know guys like that you look at and they just go out there and they play the best yeah. hockey they can. Yeah, and yeah. the points Absolutely. come because they're that good. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I, I don't think they go into the game thinking, oh, okay, it's I haven't had a goal in two games. I got to score tonight. You know, yeah. they just go out there and they say, all right, I'm going to be the best player I can be. I'll probably score if I am, yeah. you know? Yeah. And, oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's the right mindset to have. So to be, play with those, with guys like that in an environment like that will be really fun. Sick. Um, I don't know if I'm, I feel like this has been decided and announced. Are you wearing 80? Yeah. What is the deal with 80? Uh, it's for uh, Matisse, who uh, passed away in Columbus. Um, you know, I was there for his first game, yeah. first win. Uh, that game at MSG was unbelievable. Oh. He was outstanding. Yep. Um, and every game that he played, he was extremely good, win or lose. You know, um, but yeah, that game at MSG was was crazy, and you felt like he was going to be a good goalie in this league. And um, you know, when he passed away, I remember thinking, "What can I do?" Yeah. You know, I, I and there's there's nothing you can do at that point yeah and i was in columbus picking up my uh furniture from uh because i was trying to move out to my place and i went for dinner with one of the trainers and i told him I, i'd like to wear number 80 and he was like well do it just text your uh, yeah. uh equipment guy in winnipeg and, and ask him and i was like is it too late he's like no it's not so i asked the family first if if oh, i could because cool. I, I didn't know if that was something that they wanted to kind of retire um so i asked the family first and they said that that would be great you know it'd be he'd be happy and you know I, how i saw it was i wanted to keep his legacy going because his career got sh cut short absolutely yeah and we saw the promise and the hard work that that he put into the game that he was going to have a great career so yeah i i text the family i asked them they said that'd be great and then ever since it's number 80 so yeah i you know when i when i um imagined it in my head it was if I ever win the Stanley Cup, you know, it'll be my last name, but it'll be his number. Yeah. And that's kind of what made me decide that I, I wanted to have number 80. Yeah, man. It's amazing. Like, I, I feel like, you know, to be able to carry his legacy and spirit everywhere you go, that's a pretty amazing thing. And I think it's also really cool that you've been able to wear it on multiple teams yeah. now. Yeah. And it's like, because yeah. it really is traveling. And, mm -hmm. and, you know, there's a sense of him and his family are traveling with you. That's pretty special. So yeah. I think it's awesome that you do that. Yeah. Thank you. Really, really cool stuff. 
Uh, okay, so we're going to close you out with a game we always play. It's called Pass, <laughs> Shoot, Score. And it's just a rating system, okay? So we're going to give you a couple categories. I'm going to give you three things. Pass. Assists are cool, but that's our least favorite. <laughs> Shoot is the middle because we like getting pucks on net. Score, light in the lamp. That's the best, okay? It's basically Mary Fuck Hill. Yeah. Okay, yeah. The hockey version. Oh, yeah. That made it simple, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the first category we're going to give you is TV shows. Pass, shoot, score, Friends, The Office, <laughs> Love Island. You guys are going with a hard-hitting question <laughs> from the start. Love Island, pass. Oh, damn. Okay. Fuck. You watch the British one? Yeah. Yeah, okay. It's wild. It's, it's wild. wild. It's the only one to watch. I didn't even watch the other ones. Yeah, yeah. It no, is you don't need. wild. No. Uh, but yeah, I'll pass that because that's more recent. Um shoot friends okay because i don't know shoot friends because the office of score because like i've been watching that when it was coming out on dvd uh, yeah buying it on ebay get the dvds stat. in great and watch stat, it. so that's why friends is really close yep. but i've watched the office for 18 years 16 or however long it's been out Dude. over and over and over and over it's always in the background of my house it's yeah i'm gonna pull a dewey here but I'm telling the truth. <laughs> there, there is a iPhone app or, you know, just phone app. I'm pretty sure it's called Quiz Up. And oh, it was yeah, just yeah, like yeah. A quiz yeah. app. And for a long stretch, I was the number one ranked person in North America at the office trivia. Because same deal, I've watched every episode of that show like 300 times. It's ridiculous. It's, yeah. it's, it's my fall asleep on t uh, too, while yeah. I'm going to bed show. And I have, ev still to this day in my house, I have every <laughs> DVD set of every season. And like, dude, I knew weird shit about that. Yeah. So like, I mean, Brian Baumgartner, Kevin Malone had a podcast called The Accountants for a long time talking about The Office. That's And cool. like, that's the shit you learn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's not, there, anybody on that cast is on my bucket list of who I'd like to meet. Anybody. Oh, you're in LA I'll now, dude. Anybody. We can make dude, this happen. My favorite. Who's your favorite character? Creed. 100%. I was go. Oh. Is that Creed? Is but <laughs> thank you. He is. I've never. Yeah. It's not even close. No, and he has the least amount of lines. Yep. And but he's. I can't believe you said that, dude. I every, can't believe you said yeah. that. That's unbelievable. Every thank time you. Creed talks, it's a Hall of Fame moment. Every yes. time. It's fucking incredible. Every I quote time. Creed all the time, and rarely people get it, but now I know you yes, get it, and that pumps oh. me up. Oh yeah, thank you so oh. much for that, dude. You know, you probably know this, but. You know that the actor's name is Creed Brown. Yes. A lot of it is real. Yes. Dude, yes. <laughs> dude, there's that episode where Michael is uh, declaring bankruptcy and Creed has that moment where he goes, Creed Bratton doesn't have money problems. When Creed has money problems, he transfers his debt to William Charles Schneider. That is actually the actor's real name. And he changed his name to Creed Bratton to be an yeah. actor. So the fact that he's like just telling, like I've heard stories where the, the camera crew and like the writers would just like roll camera on him sometimes be like, just talk. Dude. Yeah. Just like, yeah. talk about your life. <laughs> the guy is a fucking legend. It's unbelievable. He is easily some of my favorite scenes of all time in that show. Yeah. It's, it's incredible. Yeah. I, what, I always quote the thing when it's like, they, they're they gone. You'll know better than me, but like they're gone for the day and Creed gets put in charge. Yeah. And he's trying to make an acronym for, for, for Bo, Bo Body. body. Bo, Bo Body. Bo Body. Bo Body. Bo body. Bo body. <laughs> I do that all like, the time. Just so Pam's like, what's happening right now? <laughs> <laughs> like throws the keys. Oh, yeah, throws the keys. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking beautiful. Okay, so that's your that's your goat show. Like that is- That's the, my goat show. Yeah, no. It's the show I've been yeah. watching all my, my family, like my whole family. Yeah. Like they'll do quiz. They'll go to bars and do like the quiz night. Yeah. And um, yeah, that's by far- and I love Friends. We, I've been watching Friends. Yeah. My mom would watch Friends all the time. But The Office is... Hard to beat. It's hard to beat. It's oh, hard to dude. Beat. It's so good. And the more you watch it, the funnier it gets. 100%. Because dude. there's so many like small references and small lines yeah. that you didn't notice the first 12 times watching. But then on the 13th and 14th, you're like, oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I it's never heard so, that. It, so good, man. There's like incredible great callbacks. God, I could talk yeah. about The Office forever. Um, I think mine would be the exact same. I would, I would swap... Love Island and Friends, I think. Yeah, that's two for you. Yeah. Love Island's two. Yeah, is yeah. it because of the laughing? Like uh, the, the laugh track? The laugh yeah. track. Yeah. Yeah. I don't love the laugh track. That's a common yeah. topic. Yeah. Yeah. I think the only, I think Seinfeld is like the only laugh track show that I was like, I can just push through. But dude, Friends is funny. There's is, no yeah. doubt about it. Friends was one of those shows for me where it would, it would be on. And I'd be like, yeah, I don't really love Friends. And then next thing I know, I'd blink and I'd, yeah. I'd have watched yeah. four episodes. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, Friends is pretty great. Pretty good. I just, the mayhem, dude, of 
of Love Island. It's just oh, it's electric. So do you like dating God, shows or do you just like that one? No, just that I one. just fell on Love Island yeah. like when I was in Columbus. Yeah, same. I had honestly. nothing to do. It was yeah. like a put this on There's yeah 53 then, episodes yeah and then like, 20 episodes like, I'm like insane. where am i what yeah. time is it yeah. no, i've yeah. done the same thing we went on like a huge group trip to catalina a couple of years ago and we have a million things planned to do and next thing you know we watch 15 episodes of love island we it's did insane. finish one of those seasons once it was one of those days it was like a sunday and we were 10 away from yeah. being done and we were like we probably pump this in one whole day? thing today yeah. <laughs> just like watch it for 10 hours <laughs> that's like oh, um all right your next one kicking it to soccer pass shoot score Cristiano, Wayne Rooney, Mbappe. I knew that the choice between those first two is going to hurt you personally. Oh, that's a tough one. Do they get easier than this? Or is no, this no. Like a, they, they get they're getting harder and harder. Okay. Uh, <laughs> that's real, honestly. Pass. Or no, no, no. I got to finish with. Yeah, pass. No, pass is yeah. worse. Yeah. Pass Ronaldo. Whoa. Oh, damn, I, dude. Wow. Pass, uh, no, 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 no. I'll take it back. Pass Mbappe. <laughs> okay, that, I was like, pass God. Mbappe. Yeah. Shoot Ronaldo, score Rooney. Wayne, because Wayne was <laughs> when I was growing up, we played this game called uh, like FIFA Street. Oh yeah, yeah. and his video. character yeah. is just like a block. Yep. Yeah, and he was his, you know, his shooting was unbelievable. Yeah. He he was so good. Yeah. Um. So I just have that. I have the highlights in my head of him. Ronaldo obviously was unbelievable yeah, what he did at Manchester United then Real Madrid then Juventus yep. then back to, but yeah. yeah um yeah I I just think Wayne Rooney I liked Man U well I still like Man U so um yeah yeah I, I'm, I'm comfortable with that Mbappe unbelievable player but she's just newer he's just new yeah, yeah. he's yeah. not That's, like I, I, yep. I thought that was going to be your your yeah ranking. yeah he's I mean he's going to be he is I think now probably the best player in the world but yeah. Yeah, he's just newer. So yeah. that's I'll say that. That's that's it. I think and as a United fan, you being a United fan, I was like, it's gotta be Rooney. Rooney yeah. was I mean, god damn, Rooney's heyday with United was electric. Uh we're Chelsea fans. I almost brought in a Chelsea jersey. You said we? You too? Yeah. yeah both of us. They said you're a man you. No, no, no. 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 I, I was saying you as oh, a Okay. United. I was like, come Chelsea. on. Man. Yes. Um how are you feeling about Mount? Because that was a tough departure for us. And he has been terrible so far. He'll be fine. Yeah, but he'll be fine. Yeah, and exactly. you know, that's what look, I wanted to hear. Chelsea right now. Oh, dude, Dewey's a Chelsea fan. I know. So I was texting him the entire. Don't, I was, don't tell tell him what you got him, but don't tell Dewey yet. Oh yeah, I well no, he knows. He knows. Okay. Yeah. Um, I was just in London, and I was like texting him the whole time, and he was like, "Dude, should I just come?" And I was like, "Actually, yeah, <laughs> get on a plane right now." But um, I went in. A, I got a perfect window. I got tickets and went to the Luton game. So like, got a great win, but dude. Since last year, it has just been fucking brutal for this team. It you know what? Insane. I don't feel bad. Yeah, <laughs> you shouldn't. You the, should. I, don't the, I, I don't like what they're doing right now. I don't like how they're buying so many guys. Yeah, and young guys. Dude. So many young guys. A billion dollars. And yeah, <laughs> and and it. Yeah, I, I don't. I mean, I I don't get it, but I get it. But I don't. And no. yeah, it's. I mean, I'm not. I'm not upset. Yeah. I'll say that. I'm, just, I'm not upset. Fans, non-fans of Chelsea, it must be a blast seeing them spend a billion dollars in the last three years and still be like, we can't win. Yeah, it's fucking horrible, dude. But they're buying. A, they're buying just young guys. It's he's li- no that have never played in the no prem, and it's yep. the hardest league to play in. And dude, PL. So Bowley is literally just playing manager mode. He's legitimately buying all the 20 year olds in the world and being like, this, yeah, we'll win. And I'm like, no, you're playing U23 in the Prem. You're going to lose. And then what happens when he's out of U20 players is he buys a team in France, Strasbourg, yeah. to send them to. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, <laughs> I, I don't like what Chelsea's doing right oh, now. It's, it's a nightmare. Insanity. Uh, where did you watch the World Cup final? This, wait, this the last, last one. one. Yeah. yeah. Where did I watch it? And were you devastated? Yeah, I'm pretty sure I. I didn't shed a tear. I won't say that, yeah. but I was I was extremely upset. Unbelievable game, the whole time. unbelievable game. game. Yeah, Colomani should have scored. At, I know, the, I know. And I'm saying should have like yeah. it's easy, but yeah. I thought he scored. Yeah, I thought he was going to score. It was perfect. But um, you know what's nuts, man? That game, that Mbappe's game, will go down as possibly the greatest performance in a World Cup game ever, and it'll be forgotten yep. because he didn't win. It's oh. insane. Yeah. Still, devastating. Yeah, still devastating. Yeah, no, but I, uh, yeah, I don't remember exactly. I watched this with a lot of friends. Might have been in a bar or something. Yeah. I think it was in a bar. God. I watched the Euros, the last Euros, 
uh, in an Italian bar with my Italian Holy friends. Sick. And I have a Vespa back home. <laughs> so when they won, they had fireworks. Yep. And they put an Italian flag on my Vespa, and I was just driving in circles, like honking. And every it, it was that was wild. That but, is cool. Yeah. Yeah. That's. Uh, yeah. And then uh, how nuts is Messi on Miami been? You've been watching. Yeah, it, right? I went to the game. Yeah. Oh, oh shit! Really? Yeah. Yeah. Sick. And we got to see his bodyguard too, which was another reason I want to go. See, wow. did you ever see the guy yeah, like yeah, walking yeah, yeah, with yeah, yeah. him? Yeah. Um. So because <laughs> there's somebody. <laughs> yeah. Somebody came on the pitch and he started running and tackled him. But yeah. uh, yeah, he's so good and he's it's crazy. I mean, he he could play wherever he wants, yeah. you know, and still. Um, so it's great that he's in the MLS yeah. and you get, everybody gets to see him here. And it's um, yeah, he's unbelievable. Yeah. So sick. So good. Okay. Here's your next one, but you're gonna have to help me with this one. <laughs> Pass, shoot, score French rappers. Okay. <laughs> right we here. don't know about the pronunciation that we're going to do here. <laughs> uh, Nina, Nina, Nino, 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 yeah. Nino, Mace, Mace, yeah. Mace, Niska. Okay. Um, Pass my ass. Okay. <laughs> Shoot. Shoot Nino and uh, score Niska. Okay. And I'll explain. Please. To you. <laughs> also, side note, I saw one of my favorite French rappers at the soccer game here. He was sitting two rows in front of me. At like LAFC? Yeah. Shit, okay. And all my life, I've always said, I'm never going to be starstruck. I can see anybody, never. I don't get it, you know? Yeah. And I've been to restaurants, and I've seen actors, music, whatever, never been starstruck. I was like, I don't get it. I saw him, and my legs were trembling. <laughs> Who was it? Did you say what's up? No, I was no, way too no. scared. I know. I regret Dude. it to this day. To this day, I regret oh. it. His name is SDM. He's like my favorite rapper right now. Yeah. And um, yeah, I had I had the perfect opportunity twice both times I just choked. I choked. choked. I was Were so people, like recognizing him and no. Who, oh yeah, that is the perfect time. That is a yeah. Yep. Yeah. He probably would have loved it. He would have been yeah, like, oh, he would have made his day, dude. And then in the day before, he was like at a bar with a bunch of French people and they were taking pictures. So he would have and he yeah, I That's tough. I'm Disaster. never I'm never gonna Disaster. I know. <laughs> we we bring up the French French lose uh, France losing the World Cup and now yeah, this yeah. this is fucking brutal. Yeah, honestly I think about that almost every day yeah. what I, an opportunity I let go by. But yeah, so Niska, he was like one of the first ones I listened to. So I'll say him, Nino right now is, is uh, like he's, he, Niska is kind of like slowing down. Nino okay. is like in his prime right now. Yeah. And then Maes is really good, but he has less uh, material. Okay. But yeah, those, those three, and then there's so many more, but yeah, those three are. Do, who do you, ones. what do you listen to before games? French rap. All but which the time. one? Do any of them? Uh, Like Niska, his rap is like more like uh aggressive okay okay but he so like, maybe that's like pre-game yeah, yeah and then nino's like in the car it's more chill and then uh, like the guy all right, sdm he's like the the guy right now it's really good and then there's yeah there's so many but um you're gonna yeah, have to i'll send you my play yeah, yeah, yeah do it dude i want this because I, I will try this because it's like this. this is what i tell i like music i like yeah. anything you show me a song any kind any language good a good song is a good song yep. yeah you know uh flow voice yeah the beat everything um so you know, I, there's some. I have some Spanish and Italian songs on my phone that I love. So when I tell people in French, it's like it's a, how it makes you feel. And French rap music, it's just like gets you fired it, up. It, yeah, and it's and even the chill songs, the beat and stuff <laughs> like that. I mean, I don't know if you can tell I'm passionate about it. Yeah, no, it's awesome, but yeah, dude. it's uh, it's uh, it's really uh, good. Dude, I have a playlist that's like been great for the summer. It's very like funky, yeah. groovy, mm -hmm. and uh, you know the band Limperatrice. Yeah, I have a ton of that. So yeah, it's see, like we saw them out here. I don't yeah, speak I French, yeah. but it's like I listen to a lot of their music because it's just great vibes. Yeah. So like I get it. You're right. Yeah. Any do you, what American rappers do you like? None. <laughs> no, no, no. I like. I wouldn't say I follow any like the whole album. Yeah, sure. I like Polo G. Oh yeah, he's probably my my favorite um, like American rapper. Um, but yeah, like I like I take songs from a bunch of rappers and just Sick. put a playlist. Yeah. But yeah, and. In French rap, I listened to the whole album. Yeah. 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 Um, all right. Your last one. This is uh, Sunday afternoon vibes. Pass shoot score. Going to the store. Getting some good ingredients. Cooking your favorite meal. N number two. No traffic day. <laughs> ripping up the PCH on a Harley. Number three. Going to the dog park with Philly. And just having a day. It's a tough one. 
I don't think in my contract I could drive a motorcycle. Yeah. <laughs> Just we'll put that out there. Okay. That might be that hypothetically. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Uh, whew, I would say the dog park. It's ah, a tough one. <laughs> it, it's it's really unfair to include Philly in there because now it's personal. When I, I no, just side note, Philly had oh no anxiety issues okay. when I would leave. So he's with my sister now. Oh okay, she has a stable life. Yeah, not going on the road every yeah, okay. week. So she's with him, and now I have an English bulldog, Georgia. Okay, she's a bowling ball. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> Fuck, I've yeah. seen a pick. Yeah. yeah, she's she's a bowling ball. She doesn't even know when I'm gone. Yep, okay. she has no idea. Just sleep. I don't even think she knows we're in Los Angeles right now. She yeah. probably thinks we're still <laughs> in Montreal. Yeah. Um, and then Enzo, who's a Swiss Mountain Dog, who's oh, ten fuck. months old and eighty pounds, and he's just Dude, he's I'm in that sure. age now yeah. where he's just everything's curious to him. He's yep. knocking everything down. He's you know he's falling down the stairs because his legs are so long. <laughs> So yeah, those two together are they, they say, have enough fun that do they two, get along? Oh yeah, they love each other. Oh, that's great. They love each other. Wow. So I don't even we don't even go to dog parks, so I say pass on that because the two they of don't them need it. and yeah, yeah, the two of them in the living room, that's enough. There. Yeah. Um Dude, I have, I have a couple things to say. One, I just had a fucking heart attack that you were going to say Philly died. And I was about to be like I am the biggest piece <laughs> of shit oh, no. for bringing this up. But Philly no, is, it, has, has a happy life. Yeah. So we're He's having the time go. of his yep. life right now. Okay, good. Uh, and then also is Enzo after Enzo Ferrari? Enzo, okay, funny story. Enzo is like my name when I go somewhere and somebody recognizes me and I don't want to talk. <laughs> Oh, you just go like this. I'm Enzo. I'm Enzo. Oh. I'm not Pierre. <laughs> I say people tell that people say that to me all the time, but I'm Enzo. <laughs> oh my god! That, so it's Starbucks. You have, you have that is so. Like when you start when you ask her your name, you say Enzo. Yeah, like Starbucks Enzo. Because like also Pierre Luke. Yeah. Nobody gets. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like what? Nobody gets yeah. in in English speaking places. Yeah, so I just say Enzo because everybody gets that. Yep. Um. But yeah. So uh, Enzo is that name and. Having a <laughs> alter ego when you don't want to be recognized might be the greatest. Oh, everyone I've thinks I'm like everyone thinks I'm Pierre Luke. I'm no, no, no. so glad I asked <laughs> yeah. about that. And when That's somebody incredible. says You're Pierre Luke, I, I look like, just like him. No, yeah, yeah, like, you look just like him. Yeah, I'm like I know, I know. I get that doppelganger. Yeah. I have no idea who this guy is, but I whatever. Have oh, you dude. ever come into a circumstance where you do, you pull that move and someone's like bullshit, dude? I know it's you. Yeah, and uh, we're in Dallas. Is after a game, and I went downstairs to get my food because I ordered food at the hotel. At the hotel, yeah. And then um, I had to go get at the bar and it wasn't ready. So I was like, hey, I'll, I'll have a beer here. And these four guys next to me, they're like, we saw you play tonight. And I was like, no idea no. what you're talking about. Like, yeah, we saw you play. You're Dubois, you're Dubois, yeah. right? I was like, no, I'm Enzo. Like, Where do you work? It's like, uh, cybersecurity. Yeah. <laughs> like, what company? <laughs> Fieldman Pelts. And they're you like, dude, he's got a whole backstory. Like, yeah. yeah. I was like, they're like, oh, uh, okay. And I came back to my room and I thought, I was like, that was perfect. Because they had no idea what yeah. cybersecurity. Could, right, right, right. They yeah. had no idea what questions to Dude. ask. So I was like, "That's perfect. Yeah. That, that's that's what it is right there." Incredible. I get a buddy. God. I get a buddy who told his his job, his office, that he has a twin, and it's just in case any of his coworkers see him out, and he pretends to be the twin. He's that's like, even smarter. He's like, "Oh yeah, that's no, I, that's really you, you, smart, you, yeah. you work with my brother. Yeah, I don't know you guys, but nice to meet yeah. you. You work with my brother." <laughs> that's oh my even God. better. Devastating. Fucking incredible. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I'm we're off the rails, but this is the greatest thing I've ever heard. Yeah, in my life. I, love I have it. two follow ups. I know you love to cook. Well, hold on, he hasn't finished. Oh, yeah, right. I'll we're... say, uh, cook, shoot. Oh, damn. And, and the hypothetical, hypothetical Harley, Harley down PCH. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, you know what's great? You know, hopefully in 25 years from now, when you retire with three cups, I know what we're going to get him for a retirement gift. Yeah fucking hard yep. it's perfect then you can finally do it yeah that would be i'll put that in my notes yeah yeah I'll don't, don't forget this said, don't yeah, forget this is promise. recorded yeah. Uh, yeah yeah i can't take that back uh damn all right i know you love to cook what type of what type of stuff are you cooking oh uh, barbecue Everything. in the summer oh yeah nice. um, yeah barbecue in the summer i love mexican food yeah you're in the right place oh so, yeah, yeah. Exactly. It's a good spot. yeah. <laughs> um and that's relatively not too complicated mm -hmm. like fajitas tacos all that stuff yeah. um yeah i like to barbecue so anything on the grill and yep. you feel like a man yeah you know you have, so you have a beer in one hand yep. and, and the tongs in the other and yes you it's in your own house just, dude yeah, yeah you're yeah. like holy shit and do you have a pair of the uh hockey stick tongs yet no oh, I dude we're gonna get you some of those the, uh, now that's a housewarming yeah but if you give me some of these yep because my in-house attire especially when i'm barbecue and it's hot is sand or flip-flops yep 
and uh, just like shorts, no shirt. Yeah. yeah. Oh no, no uh, dude, it's how it smells like so, smoke yeah, and it's the vibe. So I, We're, I mean, you're you're, slides, you're getting have, yeah. a pair of ice slides, and that'll be your. There you go. There you go. Yeah. I, I you're gonna the first time you're grilling with the ice slides on, you get to send a pic. Yeah. That's All right. Yeah. Right. And then yeah. second follow up, um, I know you used to ride Harley's with your grandfather, right? And you have the tattoo, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So tell us about that and like how that started and all that stuff. Yeah, I mean, he was uh he was he was hilarious. I mean, I he passed away when I was uh twelve. Yeah. So um, you know, he lived in Atlanta, my mom's from Atlanta, all that whole side of the family, they're still there. So every summer we'd go down there for four weeks, six weeks. Um, and every time we'd go see him, he he worked at the he was retired, but he worked at the Harley Davidson shop as kind of just like a the old man that works. Yeah, there, yeah but they all have him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they all have him. It, you he know has you're a greasy going to a rag over his shoulder yeah. at all times. You know you're going to a good store if if that if the old man walks yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. You're like okay, we're good. I'll buy and one. You're like, does he work here? And it's like, ah, oh, kind of. You uh, don't know. Um, but yeah, so you know, we'd go there and we'd go see him there, and then he'd be working on his Harleys back home, and he'd you know he'd buy some repair them, drive them for a bit, yeah. sell them. So that was kind of a cycle of it. So uh, he'd always bring us out, me and my sister, he'd bring me, then drive back, and with my sister, drive back, and then you just like very calm. You wouldn't, you wouldn't talk much. Yeah. But you're like, that was so cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, so all my life I want tattoos. My mom has said, no chance you're getting them until you're 18. I'm not going to sign that paper. Yep. No chance. And then I turned 18, I got them. Uh, always wanted a Harley, can't. Yeah. But I'm in. I want to buy his, the one he was driving when he passed away. That's I, mean, I kind of want to retrace it and buy it just to have in my garage. Yeah, hypothetically, we will not be yeah. driving it. Not driving it, but uh, yeah. Do you have a beat on it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, well Dude, that yeah. is well, sick. I, actually, yeah, I say it's it's not that complicated. He, <laughs> so my mom and her sister, they had the the motorcycles. He had like five. I think we passed away. Four of them he didn't care about. Yeah. But the one that he drove all the time, it wasn't even the best. It was just like his favorite. Yeah. yeah. They gave to his best friend. He gave to his son. Okay. Wow. So, you know, I I let him know I'd like to potentially buy one day, and he said, "Just pay for the, the modifications I put on it, and we'll call it a day." So, wow. Dude. I was just waiting to get like a home where I was going to be for a while. Yeah. Like yeah. here, before I, I didn't want to start shipping it. Sure. Yeah, course, everywhere. Course. So, um, yeah. Also, not to drive it. Yeah. Hypothetically, just, yeah. Hypothetically. It's just going to be in the garage. So, so it, will you get this soon or like? Uh, probably not soon. Yeah. Um. I mean, I'd like to. Yeah, yeah. Just to, I think it'd be great just to have it. Dude, um, that is so cool. So yeah. Dude, you should just scoop it because like you never know what happens, you know? That's a good point. I might go back yeah. right now and <laughs> yeah. make some calls. Like, see what I, I can do, yeah. I feel like you're, you're in a spot me. where it's yeah. like you should get it. Yeah, yeah. Why not? It's fucking Fantastic, great. man. That's awesome. Um, I, I want to go back to cooking just for two seconds because I love cooking so much. Um, Are you, do you get into any like complicated stuff yet? Or, oh, man. Because yeah. I feel like you've got a lot of cookbooks. Yeah, I will. We got friends, serious? dude. Yeah. yeah. Who told you that? <laughs> we <laughs> never reveal sources. We never reveal man. sources. Okay, yeah. Uh yeah, I like to cook. Um my one of my weaknesses is inviting guys over and then cooking something I've never cooked before. Yep. I do this exactly. But you thing. do it so they'll clean though cuz you don't like cleaning. No, they don't clean either. <laughs> so I end up cleaning also. But uh yeah, I you know, I, I, last year I got my Traeger. I got a Traeger. Oh, you did? And oh, I was like, hey, I'm going to cook sick. something God, cool. Damn it. it. That's awesome. And um, I got a recipe for a pork shoulder and I invited uh, Brendan Dillon to come over for dinner. And the recipe was for for four pounds, <laughs> but my pork shoulder was four kilos. Oh. But I didn't yep. like pay attention yeah, to that. Yeah. So it was like, it was like going to be a six hour cook. So I put it in that you know, at one or at noon. And I'm like, Hey, come over at six. We'll be ready. Comes over at six. The thermometer's in there. Not ready. I'm like, Hey, yeah, I'm close. I'm like maybe this thing heats up fast. Eight o'clock. Not ready. We watch a hockey game. I'm like, <laughs> Hey, it's going to be ready in the second period. 10 30 or like 10. Not ready. I'm like, Hey, I'm so sorry, man. We're gonna have to order food. Yeah. yeah. We ordered food midnight. I stayed up. Wasn't ready. Yeah. You got to at that point, <laughs> dude, finish the job. Yeah, and then he left after we ate from the, yeah, the yeah. order. And then, uh, I took it out. It wasn't even ready. At midnight, I took it out. I was like, I want to sleep. Yeah. Yeah. Took it out. Then the next day, I put it back in. And I was like, I'm going to finish. I'm not going to eat it. I just want to finish the yeah, job yeah, yeah. just to feel like a man. Yeah. Like I did this right. And uh, I ended up eating it. And it was good. And I, and he didn't believe me. So I cut some off. Yeah. I brought it to him. I was like, try it. Just eat <laughs> it, man. I swear to God. Just, uh, so yeah. When did you realize yeah. the mistake that was made? 
probably around 8 30 but yeah. i don't admit it yeah, yeah i was yeah. also in denial does, like, does he know what happened yet yeah okay i good. told myself <laughs> yeah. like, i'm so sorry i he's like no it's fine it's the thought that counts yep. i was like if i went to somebody's house and and dinner was the next day yeah <laughs> they promised like, me a six o'clock dinner also, and at midnight i went home and i was like did we just order pizza what the fuck happened and also like he was super nice about it because like if i would have gone to one of my friend's house and it says cooked to 250 and it's at 120 yeah i'd be like dude this is gonna be ready in 70 hey now. bud yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> just come to the fact that it's not gonna be ready yeah. he goes, maybe he'll be ready in 30 so he was a great guy what a guy oh, yeah it's fucking yeah. incredible um all right well dude that is that that's the last one we had for you so we've taken up enough of your time but before we let you go is there anything you want to shout out or plug before we get out of here uh i said my shouts winnipeg uh the people there um david savard yes i always said me and him we've always said me and him together on a podcast would be fun just just saying it because he's yeah we'll gotta get him here yeah might have to make that happen i like that Um, so yeah then uh a few my friends back home that they said, if you don't do this, we're going to be upset with you. Yep, you so got Charlie, it. Kat, Tyler. That's uh, that's the, yeah, and then that's it. Fuck yeah, yeah. I love it. Uh, all right, well, dude, thank you so much for coming on. This is a blast. And uh, I think this is uh, the beginning of a lot of stuff we'll be doing because you're in our neck of the woods now for a exactly, long time. Yeah. It's a great stuff. Amazing. Great interview with Pierre-Luc Dubois. King's got a good one. I think he's so happy here in LA. I'm so happy for him. We're going to do some hanging out, and then I got to buy him a Harley Davidson. Yeah, yeah. You owe him a lot. You made a lot of promises, honestly. I am going to get him a pair of uh, hockey tongs, though. Yeah, okay. He's a, he's a, he's a grill guy. He's got to have a pair of hockey tongs. Cost 10 bucks. Yeah, it's unbelievable. Uh, we're going to get him some slides, get him some tongs. Get that we can slides. do. Um, He's got the right attitude. I'm super excited for his season. Yeah, it's awesome. I really think he could, he could break out in a big way. Yeah. Um, well, folks, that's it for us at The Rough Cut today. I'm headed to Vegas, going to be doing some stuff. Keep an eye out for that. And we're getting closer, man. We're creeping, creeping, we're creeping, we're creeping. And uh, like you heard PL say, the, 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 the boys are headed to Australia for the uh, Yotes game in Melbourne, Melbourne. And uh, preseason hockey's coming. We're getting back, baby. It's unbelievable. So do what I always do. Skate hard. <laughs> <laughs>